Borada sit my hdunod Borada then Bobo Reve, the sit my hdunod Ribod, Ron Edu E, a Creso, a Ving Karshev Moon. Ah, good morning, my strange people. How's your day been? I'm Ruan and welcome to my spooky home. Um, the uh, two things. So I've got this little jobby doing its thing. Um, cause uh, I I got some uh, some charged up batteries and it's hold on. Oh, this light is overshadowing it. Oh, well, I've got the, uh, I've got the little, um, ah, that's way too bright. There we go. That's a light. Uh, ah, no, I think the middle one. All right, there we go. That's some lighting that I like. And I was going to tell someone that, uh, yeah, sorry that I bumped the time back buy another 10 tonight because I am, um, I, <laughs> I grossly, um, overestimated how all right my, um, my face was doing. So here's a, here's a fun fact. If you have psoriasis, which I do, son of a bitch. Um, yeah, I, uh, um, my makeup tonight is very uneven because, um, um, if you have psoriasis, don't end up in a tent during the winter, at least not during the winter, because I, um, yeah, unless you are going to be absolutely diligent about going to like a planet fatness or, you know, a friend's place to shower and, you know, you're going to do your medications like every night um just because um where i was set up was just enough of a distance from the planet fitness that i decided you know like fuck it a couple nights in a row. and yeah i was in the uh i was in the um extended stay america but you know like when you fall out of a habit for a bit it's a bit difficult to get back into it <laughs> so um so yeah, like I like had gross. So like I've um, you know, in addition to psoriasis, I've also just got generally dry skin. So um, you know, I put on my makeup and suddenly like my skin is just like sloughing off. Um, it's getting like really cakey, really fast. Um, you know, but on the parts of my skin, like on my cheeks, where I have not been having psoriasis plaques and otherwise like major dry skin patches it was going on pretty even so you know like when it's up in my t zone and it's all and my you know i i put on my uh, my foundation and it just like and the skin underneath just starts sloughing off um i'm just like screw it and you know i didn't completely take off my makeup cuz i i'm also like grossly underestimated how this would be affected by the light and um, so, uh, so yeah, I, um, I've, um, I've got some heavy incentive to, uh, I mean, I've already been using an exfoliant every other time I shower. Um, so I've just got, I've just got even more incentive to, you know, just like get back into things because I, I'm a, I'm I'm my own worst nightmare, a femboy with bad skin. So, anyway, both of you who are here tonight via the uh, uh, one via YouTube, one via Twitter, always dead name Twitter. Don't cave into Elon. Um, all right, this is starting to bother me. I might get up and get my stick to go over my um my scruff. I also took a little bit longer shaving than I'd anticipated because, you know, like just as a matter of, um, time management, I had fallen into the habit of using like disposable, 
um, you know, a double blade cartridge razors, you know, just, um, and of course, um, when I'm shaving with my Tasso's, um, rolls safety razor, it's a very different kind of shaving. So, you know, I fall out of that habit, have to get back into it. Um, let me, uh, just to like illustrate like <laughs> what I'm talking about with my Tashau's razor, my granddad, he was from Cornwall. Tashau is like, you know, like it's a familiar form of like the equivalent to granddad. So like, this is his razor. It's uh, if you're one of my, ah, um, really, we're doing this tonight. Um, I don't know. Yeah, if you're one of my um, friends here from uh, Catboy Ranch, you might have seen this photo. It's um, so like the gray panel of um, of the case. That's um, that's a whetstone to keep it, you know, um, honed and sharpened, like properly sharpened. And then the uh, the brown panel underneath the um, well, the middle part is the handle. I think I took, no, I don't think I took another picture. Or if I did, no, that's not it. Really? My other picture is like saved to like Discord or some shit? But yeah, it's, um, it's a very, um, you know, y you have to hold the angle in a very specific way. And I'm trying to get back into that habit. And of course, like, I also don't want to cut up my face, so... Hold on. Just sending a Discord friend my streamer handle. Um, so let's see, where was that? Okay, let's see. Okay, this is the thing. Um, okay, gonna search from a specific person. So that's gonna be from R U A D H from myself. And that's me. Okay, let's see. Cat pictures, music videos, um, crap and stuff, dumb gifts, Father Ted gif. Like, I will just say it right now, Grand Liminaham peaked way too early. Um, it's like, Father Ted still a goddamn banger of a comedy and um i hear good things about the it crowd i don't it just never i, I haven't seen either the uk or the us version it, it's just i don't know it just seemed just didn't really seem like something i would want to watch so i haven't yet oh okay yeah what the hell why did that not save to gallery Okay, so here's the razor on the handle. It's, um, so yeah, like the, uh, the head comes off and then you, um, twist the handle a little bit. So like that bigger part, I don't want to go up to my vanity table and get it back out just cause, well, I'm, I've got the, uh, I've got the, I've got the blade up to dry before I, you know, put it away. And just because I have sensitive skin, I shave every other day. So, of course, this is just, <laughs> this is going to be a big process to, um, you know, and this is why housing is a human right, um, because, um, you know, the, the, the little ways that you have to recover from homelessness, it, it, people just, like, really don't seem to grasp, like, little you know, little things, little habits that, you know, they do daily or near day, uh, you know, regularly enough. And people don't grasp that. And so because they don't grasp it, they just like take these little bits for granted. And all of that, so like I said, like the recovery process from this is a thing, right? Uh, oh, this is the t-shirt I picked up from Five Below yesterday. Um, the risk I took was calculated, and unfortunately, 
but unfortunately I'm bad at math. <laughs> Which is... That, that can be said by, uh, about so many things in my life. So, um, yeah, if, uh, if, okay, so another thing is like, there's something up either with the bulb or the wiring in my closet. So I turned on the, the light in my closet, uh, just to like, see if that would like help. Um, if the, uh, if the little mini clip on ring light thing wasn't going to behave after I charged it up fully um last night after the stream um so i turned that on but then like the bulb immediately flickered off so uh but i've noticed like it will come back on randomly sometimes like i assume that the light had the first time that happened i assumed the light bulb had burned out i still need a new step ladder um long story why i don't have one anymore i don't want to talk about it but i need a new step ladder so if anybody wishes to um, drop some donations my way, I'm going to... Unfortunately, I, I can do many things whilst talking, but typing is not really one of them. So there's the PayPal, and um, if you do it via Ko-Fi... Um, if you do buy Ko via Ko-Fi, please select the PayPal option rather than the, uh, the Stripe processing, just because the Stripe processing takes up to a week. And it is a holiday this weekend, and that, like, yeah, Easter's on Sunday, but I don't know how badly that's gonna, like, um, affect things. Oh, right. So, yeah, if the, if suddenly, like, there's a there's light coming on from this direction. It's because my closet is goddamn wonky. I don't know if it's the bulb or if it's the wiring, and I got to get somebody in here to, you know, look at that. Of course, I'm still waiting for somebody to come and, you know, like fix the baseboard underneath the dishwasher that I have stuffed with like paper grocery bags to um to keep Nigel from getting stuck under the dishwasher again. Um, Nigel is one of those cats. Like he is a very large, well. Not very large. Like, like he's not Maine Coon large, right? But um, but he is a rather large um cat. He's a little bit smaller than your average Bengal, which are a little bit smaller than Maine Coons. But people don't realize, don't seem to realize how um how big Bengals actually are. So Nigel's on the smaller side for a Bengal. So like shoulder to rump, um. You have no, <laughs> anybody watching this has like no sense of what the perspective is because, well, I mean, I am four foot 11, so, um, ugh. I don't want to go into the front room to get a record album. That's how old I am. I call like a vinyl record album still. Um, okay. I assure you this is wider than the average record album vinyl album whatever i assure you this is wider than that so like shoulder to rump so excluding head and tail shoulder to rump i would guess about 14 and a half inches toe to shoulder a little under 12 inches i would guess like maybe about 10 and a half toe to shoulder um he is a very lean boy he is a lean 17 18 pounds depending on the season and and all that because you know like his weight fluctuates you know, between seasons, like many people and many, you know, house pets, um, you know, as long as it doesn't like get too, too much or too little, right. You know, he's, you know, so he's in a healthy weight for his size. Um, but he's one of those, he, he's one of those big boys who does not realize how big he is most of the time <laughs> until it gets him into trouble. Like when he got stuck under the dishwasher because, you know, somehow, this past the section eight inspection uh with um with a big um panel in the baseboard being like kicked out and under it so like i said that's why i stuffed it with paper grocery bags that i've crumpled up to um you know keep nigel from going back under there and getting stuck again because you know you don't want to argue with a you know with about an 18 pound cat who 
got himself stuck under the dishwasher and unable to get back out. Um, so, um, so, uh, so yeah, um, where was I going with it? Oh yeah. Yeah. So that light might come back on from the closet and Nigel has been complaining at me all day and it doesn't seem to be for any apparent reason. Like, you know, like we're both sitting on the bed, like me with my, my breakfast coffee, um, watching my comedy news from the night before, because that's, you know, that, that's my routine for, um, you know, that's my morning routine. That's how I gauge like, you know, oh, cause if I watch YouTube videos in the morning, you know, like I put on ASMR videos to help go to sleep ASMR, or sometimes if I'm having a hard time getting to sleep, um, the first two Black Sabbath albums I'll queue up on title, and there's a reason why it's Black Sabbath. Um, I don't remember if I told that, if I did a story time upload about that yet. I might have. I know I've mentioned it in my old um, radio show streams when I was still doing those. I need to get a new external hard drive for that because the... Uh, the one I had got damaged, um, this time not by Nigel. Um, he destroyed one of them. Like, it needed clean room recovery, but that's also been lost, so. Anyway, where's that going with this? Oh, yeah, yeah, the cats. So the cats, um, Nigel's been complaining at me all day for no apparent reason. Like, I'm sitting on the bed watching... You know, having my coffee, doing my morning stuff. I'm not really doing anything in the front room right now, even though I've got the TV set up and stuff, because I desperately need bookshelves. Um, I would also like my goddamn $25 headboard that I was telling people about last night when you were in chat. So, like, if we can get some um, some chat donations, which should come up on the uh, on the little um, chat thing. Um, yeah, my Ko-Fi is connected to my Twitch, so if you donate via that, it'll come up, and I will be able to read that, and I think Super Chats do, but YouTube pays out on a weird schedule. For... Oh, the light bulb in there flickered. I just saw it in the corner of my eye. So yeah, like, you know, I'll read out stuff. I read out chat regularly enough if anybody says anything anyway. Um, but yeah, so I'm like doing my morning stuff. All right, I'm going to show the headboard in a little bit and then get back to the story. Mm, excuse me. Oh, wrong thing. Okay. So there's a headboard, footboard, you know, like there's a bed frame set that is, you know, guy says it's still available. Ooh. Ooh, we've got a full length mirror. Oh, okay. I'm going to save that. That's not a terrible price, depending on how old it is. It does look a little bit on the older side. All right. I'll, uh, I'll, ooh, 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 wait. Okay, if it's 50s, it's not Art Deco. Uh, I'd say that's like 40s. It's so like not Deco, but Googie. Um, oh gosh, that's a gorgeous desk lamp. I do need one of those. Where are we at? Ooh, Ann Arbor. It's not bad. Okay, I do get paid on Monday, so. Ugh. I want this. I want this pump organ so bad, but I can't afford it. Um, oh, and it's in Canton, too. So, even if I could, I'd have to argue with people to um, <laughs> try and... Uh, you know, get one of my friends with a car to come pick it up for me and stuff. <laughs> come with me to pick it up and all that. Uh, okay, okay. Gonna look at my saved stuff, not be looking at new stuff that got posted. Gonna scroll up to my goddamn bed frame with the headboard and the footboard-ish panel. Oh, I gotta unsave that or I'm just gonna be torturing myself on the things that got away. The life of an antiquer. The antique market is a hard, is a harsh and cruel mistress, but yeah, we love her anyway. Um, I scrolled down to. Okay, there we go. It's 
it's because it's all like this this one dude just like listed like four of them in one thing so here's the uh here's the headboard and the um and up here is the foot panel um of the frame so it's like more of like a headboard with a bed frame you know because the uh um footboard part is you know a bit more um subdued right so i want to repaint the white um the uh the wood that's been painted white sorry nigel asthma hold on cat's having an asthma attack again i mean not a bad one this time you okay baby nigel my little baby boy doing okay Okay, he sounds better. Ah! Okay, so yeah, my plan for this headboard, um, assuming I can get the 25 bucks together before Monday. Oh, granted, the bus is not going to be running on Sunday. But uh, but yeah, so I want to repaint the white um, just to go better with the room um, and reupholster this panel because that is an upholstery panel on there. Um, so yeah, I want to, you know, it's going to be like a mini project but I am going to, I am, I do. Oh, that's what I forgot to do today. I forgot to call the insurance people about the couch that ended up damaged in my storage unit. Cause I do need to reupholster the couch, but I need the insurance payout to do that. So, um, don't worry about that. Of course, if I get $2,000 in donos tonight, I won't have to worry about the insurance payout, but, or at least not as much anyway, I'd still want the insurance payout on principle. That would be nice. <laughs> you know, just like I paid the, I, you know, I paid the extra $15 a month in my storage unit for the insurance for a reason. So if they're not going to pay out, you know, like I'm, I'm going to get them to pay out on principle since, um, you know, my couch did get damaged. Um, anyway, so yeah, I just been complaining at me all day and it seems unrelated to his asthma. Like, you know. It, it would be like, you know, like a good half hour or so after like his last, you know, asthma related coughing fit or something. Um, that's like, I think that was only the second one today. But it's like, you know, we're sitting on the bed and he's like, it's like over in the corner of the bed, you know, like, you know, we're, uh, we're just chilling. And then suddenly it's like, yeah, yeah, meow. And I'm like, what? Or he's on the window seat and, you know, was looking out the window and then just kind of like shifts him, shifts his loaf, you know, form around to the front, you know, so that he's facing me now. And then just suddenly starts, meh, meh, meow. And I'm like, what do you want? I get up to pet him or I reach over to pet him and he's okay with like, you know, like just like a little, you know, like, you know, he'll like snuzzle into my hand and I'll pet him a little bit and then he'll just like get up and go somewhere else. And I'm like, what do you want? Cat, what do you want? So if you hear him talking, he might be saying something while I'm streaming tonight. He's probably not going to end up on stream because he seemed to understand that, you know, how um before Murnau died, um, he uh he totally understood how like Zoom therapy and um and live streaming works, right? Um he totally understood how that works, especially with the, my therapist on like Zoom calls and stuff, because, you know, he would hear her voice and <laughs> and he would just like jump up in front of the in front of the camera and just be like, hello, I'm a kitty. Look at me. And, you know, so uh, so Nigel's probably figured out the same thing. I'm sure they communicated this before Murnau died. Um, so. He is camera shy. He is totally, he is like a big shy boy around all of my friends. And that's okay. Cause he watches how my friends interact with Phoebe, like on the opposite side of the room. And he's cool with that. He's, you know, um, there's a very short list of people where he won't automatically like go under the furniture or into a different room or something when they're over. But, um, but yeah, like most of my friends, he'll eventually just like wander back, you know, wander out into the, front room or something um it's just he's i'm i'm the only person he really loves and that's okay so that, that's just his personality um 
Except with Worst X. Well, well, okay. Like, it did take him a while to warm up to Worst X, but he, uh, I did not expect Nigel to, you know, because Nigel likes to watch. Um, especially when it's me watching my naughty videos. Um, and I still need to find where I packed it, but Nigel has a blanket that he likes to watch from. And he'll do the he'll he'll do the he'll do the kneading, do do the little paw paw muffins, and he stares intently, purring very loudly. And it's that extra contented chirpy purr. purr, purr. Uh, yeah, and he stares very intently. And one time I woke up to him like I'm a side sleeper. I woke up to him like on my shoulder doing that, and he was clearly trying to rub himself off on his ankles. Please don't ask me why he was trying to do it that way, but um, because of the way his back end was facing toward me, because like I said, I'm waking up and this cat is trying to rub himself off on his ankles, on my shoulder, and you don't like to see that part of your cat. Um, and he's neutered too. He has neutered. He was neutered at six months old. Um, and um, so, yeah, Nigel knows very much what the hell I'm doing when he watches. And then one day, um, when it was Worst X and I, Nigel decided to watch. Worst X says, oh, God, I that's, that's Nigel I'm hearing, isn't it? And I'm like, hold on, just to let... What you can't tell? I'm like I've learned to tune him out at this point, boy. Like, what do you like? Yeah, do you want me to throw a blanket over his head? And worst is just like, uh, uh, dude, do you want me to throw a blanket over his head? He'll be, he'll he'll come back in five, maybe ten minutes, but that's plenty enough time for us to finish, right? I don't know. Why don't you know? Because if you throw a blanket over his head, then it's like I'm acknowledging him, dude. You're acknowledging him right now. He knows his name. You've said it several times. He like he is he is probably getting off on this, uh, you know, in and of itself because you know, like either I, I either if he's not thinking that you're getting what he truly wants, then he knows he's ruining it, <laughs> you know, between you and I, and that's getting him off. Why are you talking? Why are you making it creepy? Why are you saying these things? Dude, do you want me to throw a blanket over him? Ah! All right, well, you sit here and have an existential crisis while Nigel watches, and I'm going to go and finish myself off in the shower. Have a good day, hon. And it's like, dude, dude, just please. Like, <laughs> and of course, after I got up to get my, to, you know, to go finish myself off in the shower, and Nigel just decides to, like, you know, get off the bed and go into the other room. <laughs> Because I was no longer involved, and now it's not any fun. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Nigel's a very naughty cat, and it's very annoying when he does this. Um, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, that's, that's, like, a rare instance when Nigel has been apparently completely okay with another human being existing in his space. And his space includes anywhere with where I'm at. And, you know, it's okay for our pets to feel a little bit possessive like that because they are animals, right? They are not human beings. They don't understand, um, you know, interpersonal relationships and friendships and stuff in the same way human beings do. They understand, like, Nigel understands that I am his guy. I am his guy. He is my sweet little boy. And as long as I am in a part of Nigel's world, he is okay with everything. And, you know, because I am so necessary to his sense of the world being okay, it's okay when Nigel feels possessive. Because he is a cat. He is a cat. That's why he gets to feel, like, extra possessive and, like, no, you are mine, right? Like, that's why he gets to be, that's why he gets to weird out my worst ex. And in hindsight, it was, it was good that he weirded out worst ex. 
If it was best X, that would be another story. But, you know, it would also still be funny because it, he's a cat. I mean, yes, he's a fairly large cat. He's, um, <laughs> he's a very weird cat, but he's a cat. He gets to get away with being possessive and creepy about it um, because he's a cat. Because that is how he understands the world. He understands that if, you know, he, he understands that, you know, this is just a, a, dirt, well, a dirty minded cat anyway. He's very clean. He, he's very clean personally. But yes, he's a very dirty minded little cat. Um, big boy for a little cat, but, um, but yeah, he gets to have, he gets to have those kind of like extra possessive feelings about, about me because he is a cat. Um, and cats are allowed to be weird. Dogs are allowed to be weird. And we're talking literal cats and dogs. We're not talking like, you know, the, the cat boy, puppy girl, you know, our, you know, RP stuff, whatever. We are talking about a literal cat, a literal cat who we may hear tonight because he is just, he's decided to be like really weird and annoying and yell, complaining at me about all sorts of stuff and nonsense that seems unrelated to any kind of health concerns. He's been like this most of this week, but extra about it today. So that's why I brought it up tonight rather than yesterday. It's just like, you know, so I've been like, kind of paying attention to him when he makes these noises, you know, when he's like, meh, meh, when he starts yelling at me. Well, maybe not yelling at me, but like, he's like, meh, meh, meh. And I'm like, I'm like paying attention to him. I'm like looking for, because he's not usually a very vocal cat. So like when he says something, I pay attention and I'm looking around, I'm checking him out. I'm making sure everything looks okay. It doesn't seem to be anything related to his general health and well-being. It doesn't seem related to... Um, any other things going on? Um, I got out some of their toys from the bottom of their toy crate today. Um, you might hear some of those. They're the noisy toys. Um, I also got out their little play tunnel. It's like half in the closet, half out right now. Um, and it's got that crinkle sound, right? It's got that crinkly sound that they love so much. So you might hear some of that, you know, coming off from that side. So, um, so yeah, it's like I got out some extra toys to see if that's what he wanted today. Um, I don't know. If, if, I don't know what the hell he's been going on about for, like, at least since, like, Monday or something. And, like I said, I, like a, like a good cat owner, I'm checking him out. I'm making sure that I'm, like, looking around to see, like, okay, is this what you want? No. Is this what you want? No. Okay. Like, what the hell do you want? Is there something wrong with you? I, I examine, like, how he's walking after he has a little episode of complaining at me about something, or maybe he's trying to tell me about the weather. Um, maybe he's been reading Camus while I'm out doing errands, and now he has, like, existentialist thoughts about things. I don't know. I don't know. I've got, like, I've got, like, a big shelf of Camus. Um, Actually, like, it's, um, shit, where did I put all, okay, no, it's not, well, it, it is a big shelf of Camus when it's all set up, but it's, like, a box of Camus, but then again, that's, like, way up on top of the dresser that he can't get to right now, so he might be reading my Dame Darcy books, which are in a crate on the floor right now. I don't know, maybe he's, maybe he's got some, like, some deep thoughts about, like, meat cake issue four, and he, he's, unsure of what kind of crazy surreal stuff she's <laughs> she's writing about but uh but we love dame darcy because you know that's that's just kind of who she is um writing weird stuff about friend the girl and striga pez and effluvia the mermaid um so i don't know i don't know what he's going on about is he reading dame darcy while i'm out running errands and now he's got like thoughts about things um i don't know I don't know. All I know is that he's just been extra chatty at me all this week, and I can't figure out why. So if you hear Nigel, he he's just he's he's got thoughts about things. He's possibly complaining, possibly just sharing his thoughts about the world and politics. I don't know. He he's he's a strange cat. Um Phoebe, Phoebe's been mostly okay. Um, 
But um, but oh right, I forgot to go to the post post office today, too. So um, so yeah, I've got stuff to do tomorrow. So um, especially because the post office closes a little bit early tomorrow. All right, we've got four people here from YouTube, two on two watching on Twitter, one watching on Twitch. Um, all right, so uh, was I gonna look up anything? else on the phone real quick to show off i don't know and it'll show off better on the on the browser when i go around to um move stuff around with the share screen um hold on because ooh. oh that's right wait no that one's already Where's George? Okay. I do Where's George? That's the uh, bill tracker thing where, like, you, um, you know, if you ever see, if you ever get, like, a dollar with uh, Where'sGeorge.com written or often rubber stamped onto it, I've been doing that off and on since, like, 99, 2000-ish. So, like, almost as long as it's been going on. I've done it under several different usernames because I keep forgetting the login. Or at least, like, for the longest time, I keep forgetting the login or password or whatever. Um, so, okay, my... I've uh, got a couple gum pockets. I've got a gum pocket starting, which suggests that my mouth has been a little bit drier than it should be lately. So... Um, because I can't find my, um, biotin lozenges, I know they're somewhere in here, like, not, like, stuff that was in the storage unit, just, like, stuff that I got recently enough, but then immediately put it somewhere, and now I can't find it. Um, same with my copy of The Night School by Maya Toll. I was gonna re restart reading that soon. I should have it. Where the hell is it, though? That's the question. That's a $64 question. So, wherever the hell my copy of Night School by Maya Toll is, is probably where my biotin lozenges are. And, okay, yeah, there's the other ones. Well, there's the one that I, I just got from Bottle Returns. Okay, so tomorrow, um, Meyer for Bottle Returns. And then, um, Meyer for Bottle Returns. And, um, and then what happens? Um, no, wait. First is post office, then Meyer for bottle returns, and after that, um, okay. So let's see. I've pinned my Ko-Fi link, and oh crap, we lost someone. We lost number seven. We lost somebody watching on YouTube. How the hell does that happen? All right. Well, let's, um, you know what? I can close a couple of these things from the other night. So let's see. Let's close that one. Clear, clean up my, uh, clean up my browser tabs a little bit. Uh, was this, oh wait, I don't need to have this here right now, especially since I learned that conversion chart is fucking bonkers. I don't need to have that open right now. Okay. But I do need to have this tab group open right now. No, I don't need that open right now either. Son of a bitch, stop it. Okay. So let's see. So let's see. Today, I, um, so yeah, I'm going to be sounding a little bit funny because I got a butterscotch in my cheek right now because, um, I don't know where my goddamn lozenges are, but that's okay. Um, anyway, wait, that's, that's Ravelry. Why do I, why am I clicking on that? I'm clicking on Restream. All right, we've got seven back now. So... I was thinking earlier today when I remembered that, oh, hey, I'm going to be um, streaming tonight. How are we going to go about this? Um, 
Oh, right. I might want to close a couple of things. All right. So we've got that there with the sharing, but because of how Restream does this nonsense, let's uh, do that. And then this away is how I like it. All right. So we're looking at both screens, more or less at, um, at an even ratio thing. This is just how I like to have it set up. I don't like to be like the little thing in the thing because, um, I don't know, it just like throws me off sometimes. Um, like I get convinced somehow that the camera on my thing isn't working. So um, now let me close that because I'm not watching ghosts right now. But I was earlier. Um, and let's close out. Look, hello, Miss Phoebe. Hello. How are you? Oh, hello. Hi. Oh, okay. Nope. Pop is being annoying. So, yep, yep, yep. Oh, oh, but we scratched the butt. But we scratched the butt. But we scratched the butt. Yes? Nope. Please don't step on the keyboard, Miss Lady. Okay. Yes? Is it the Phoebe show? Yeah. Hi. Oh, here. There we go. Hi. Oh, I love you too. Are you my sweet little lady cat? Yes, sir, you are. Yes, sir, you are. Yes. Who's my best little girl? Who's my best little girl? So, oh, she's not going to get on the keyboard. No, she's not. Oh, but we're going to give her some patents. Nope. Yep, yep, yep. Oh, I love you. I love you. Am I annoying? Just a little bit? Okay. As long as I'm not a lot of it, okay? There we go. All right, baby. Hi. I know. I know. I know, yes. Hi. Yes. You're a very sweet little girl, aren't you? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And I love you. I do. I do. Oh, I do. I love you so much. You're just such a sweet little girl. Come here. No, not on the keyboard. There we go. No, no. Not on the keyboard. No. No, we can't be on the keyboard. I know. But that's what Papa puts on the fingers hat. Yes, I know. I know. Yes. Oh, cat butt. Elevator butt. Elevator butt. Come here. Yes. Are you a sweet girl? Yes, you're my sweet little data cat. Yes, you are. I know. Who's Miss Fibber? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Oh. Oh, that's right. I don't have snacks with me right now. I had snacks last night. I had cat snacks last night. You know what? I'm going to get up for a minute and um, get the cat snacks. Maybe, um... Hi! Hello. Yes, I love you too. Alright, so, let me play the theme song. Hi! Um, Phoebe? Yes? Oh, you want lap time? This is not about wanting snack time? We just want lap time? You need your nails clipped, Miss Lady. I'm not wearing long jeans or my skirt ag again tonight. I'm just here in my in my t-shirt and skivvies. And she really needs her nails clipped. Like, not so bad it is, like, painful, but just enough that it is kind of irritating. Hi. I need to clip your nails, Miss Missy. I do. But that's okay, because after we clip the nails, you get the, you get your chicken mousse. Hmm? Yes? I'm just shaking after nail clip? Mm-hmm. She is so sweet and so cute. And I love her so much. Oh, my gosh. All right, it's the cat stream now. Yep. 
It's the Phoebe show. I don't know if you all can hear her. She's being kind of loud with the purring. Hi. Mm -hmm. Show your people your pretty little face. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know you got such a cute little face. All right. Really? <laughs> Hi. I know. I know. It's Phoebe's show. Yes, it's a Phoebe stream. It's a Phoebe stream. What? Is Papa being annoying? Just a little bit. Really? Oh. -ho. There we go. Disciplinary annoying, right? Like that. Seriously, cat. You just <laughs> Okay. Well, she's um she she's gonna be um Phoebe's decided to uh to just like flop down like right between me and the high. Really? Cat, I'm supposed to be reading stuff right now. I got like three hours to read stuff. And the more you the the more you interfere, the less it's gonna happen. Which means which means that um the less likely people are going to all right there we go there we go because um because papa needs delicious monies for his headboard and nigel's inhaler and maybe a new cat tree or at the very least i'm going to email the people at the company that makes it and say i don't know i'll just say something like i lost the well I mean, it's technically true. I lost the little bag of bits in the move, and I would like some new hardware to put this thing back together. And hopefully that will be a lot cheaper than getting a brand new one. I don't want to get a brand new one because a brand new one in the same style. They do make the same style, so I don't have to tell them how long I've had it. <laughs> I don't have to tell them I've had it almost 20 years, so, no, well, over 15 years. So yeah, I don't need to tell them I have I've had it over 15 years because they do make the same exact style. I'll just tell them like you know, hey, I I have this. I bought this at Petco, and the cats and I moved, and I lost the little blue bag of bits to um to put it back together. Can you send me a new bag of bits for like twenty dollars? That would be nice if it could be that little because I'm not I don't want to pay two hundred bucks for a new one. But they're my kitty cats, so I will if I have to. Anyway. Now that, uh... Now that Phoebe has let me... Has decided to let me, um, proceed with stuff. So, yeah, like, I woke up to some stuff. Well, I didn't wake up up to it, but I did see some stuff on Twitter after I woke up. And, uh, so yeah, I don't want to touch the, uh, the, uh, the alleged Kiwi Farms for thread, but, um, I, I don't want to, I don't want to, that's like, for queer people on the internet, that's like digital self-harm. Like, even if they're not talking about you in specific, it's just, like, no, it's it's depressing to, uh, to scroll through that. And, um, and I know because, um, I have been at least vaguely aware of Chris Chan since technically before something awful was aware of Chris Chan. So anyway, um, Ms. Milena... Um, at Transpersian on, um, what's it called? Twitter. I'm sorry, the, uh, butterscotch is like, gotten just small enough to be kind of annoying, so. Hopefully the sugars will keep the saliva's flowing. 
for a bit. So anyway, um, about the fruit site's involvement, item one, the thread's original poster said he's been following uh, Poppy and Zena since, you know, 2022 or thereabouts, you know. Not because of Milena's thread, like Sage claimed. Um, all of us, too, all of us stopped posting when it appeared. Um, I, you know, she told Poppy, but they all kept posting, so we resumed. Ceasefires need to be mutual. Um, and I replied, uh, also, it's not like all of her recent BS from the first, is, is the first time they've heard of her. And we've got a, we've got a screen cap I took, uh, from Gayfish saying, Poppy once bragged to him that um, Kiwi Farms posters were speaking positively about her in the Lily Orchard thread and even, and you know, were even sharing her GoFundMe and encouraging other people to donate to it. So, um, so yeah, um, sounds like uh, Poppy's all good and fine with Kiwi Farms until they start to affect her own life. But, you know, she's a narcissist, so that's how she operates. And uh, let me, uh, let's see, there were some other pretty awesome Twitter highlights from uh, Milena earlier today that I noticed. Okay, this is, this is the first one I noticed. And this is also where I noticed that Gayfesh had unblocked me, because, okay. Um, you know, like I said earlier today, I, I don't really have anything against him. I think a lot of, you know, whatever the hell is just like a personality clash, but I think he's been more than fair to Poppy, even when, um, like, I, I think he's been, like, more fair than she deserved, like, um... You know, uh, for anybody who didn't catch me the first time I streamed about this, um, like a hundred years ago, like in January of this year, um, oh, right, I, it's, Twitter makes it an ass to, um, to search, um, an account, um, search, like, an individual account's um, what's it called? Tweets on um on the browser rather than the phone app, uh, because you know Elon has no idea what the hell he's doing. And okay, let's see. Oh, that's right. I was trying to find my old tweets about like how Joe Biden was. <laughs> like that's what this is all about here. Because like back around um twenty odd eight during the uh you know like the election that got Obama in the office. Um, cause, uh, when, um, when Joe, when it was announced that Joe Biden was his running mate, I said something about how it, uh, how, how Joe Biden looks like the, looks like the friend that the Obamas will take to honky night at the jazz club, which is like an old, um, comedy record bit. I keep thinking it was Cheech and Chong, but other people tell me it was like Richard Pryor, and I don't know who the hell it was now. I can't find a clip of it online anywhere, um, but I'm not the only person who remembers it, so it's like not some kind of Mandela effect or something. It's just, um, or at least not an end of, you know, no, wait, an, an, a Mandela effect would need it to be a number of people, so I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, I, I, try, and, I, I try to like figure out who the hell it was regularly enough um hopefully somebody um at least as old as if not older than myself will help me fit will help me figure out who the hell this was because i know i'm not crazy but um but yeah like the little bit goes like oh come down down to honky night at the jazz club bring your own honky getting free and then the other guy says yeah you make him pay so it's like so of course like i said like I'm sorry, Joe Biden still looks like the, you know, and, you know, you know, like having Kamala Harris as his VP, this does not, you know, disprove my allegations that he is the friend the Obamas take to honky night at the jazz club. I'm like, 
I, I, I'm like, I'm sorry. Look, like, the, the, the dude's just a honky. I, um, I, I find him kind of likable, at least as a person. Um, like all good leftists, I've, you know, I'm, I don't know. Well, at least as like a more pragmatic leftist anyway, I've got mixed fi- opinions about how he's done as a president. Um, 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 um but, uh, but, you know, I, I don't know. He just looks like a honky. That's like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like you look up honky in a slang dictionary in like 20 years or something, you're going to have a picture of Joe Biden. Um, I would be surprised if that's not the case on Urban Dictionary right now. Like, go up. I'm I'm not going to get sidetracked by looking up honky on Urban Dictionary. That'll be just be a. So yeah, like that's what this is all about here with like searching my own name in Honky Night at the Jazz Club. But apparently, you cannot like search any. You cannot search even like on the app for your own account. Like you can't search like like when you search your stuff on Twitter now, you can't go back like more than four or five years. And it's driving me nuts because like I said, I made these tweets well over a decade ago. So, um, (laughs) you know, and I wanted to like look them up and repin them to the top of my account because, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's funny. It's funny. And we're going to have like president honky night, for a second term, I hope. It's better than President Annoying Orange for a second non-consecutive term. But I'm sorry, if it's a choice between President Honky Night Part 2, Electric Boogaloo, or President Annoying Orange, ah! <coughs> um, I'm sorry, I think we're gonna go with President Honky Night. That's just, like, like no, no. Yeah, no, no, I, I, I will... Hopefully, retain a mental note to make that tweet later. And if anybody takes that from me, I will be very cross. Um, okay, let's see. Um, gayest fesh. This was like a quick reminder of um of um of stuff that was going on back in January. Um. Oh, that's right. Um. Ride or die for. <laughs> I almost right, typed in poopy. <laughs> okay. So, um, no. Latest. Of course not. Okay. So, wait, no. Location. Advanced search. Is that what you're making us do now? Okay, all these words, um, ride or die, wait, um, okay, this is an exact phrase, paste, ride or die, any of these words, none of these words, language, accounts, Is fish search. Um, latest. There we go. Okay. So back in January, they're about. Oh, that's why it didn't turn up. Okay. Around January 17th, um, I was ride or die for a very long time with uh, P and Z. A lot of people were. I literally gave um, Zane and my home address, you know, his home address. Um, yeah. Why the hell not? Um, that so many are breaking away and speaking out now should probably be assigned to them. When it smells like shit everywhere you go, check your own shoe. Um, and then let's see, what was the um Okay. So here's the one I was thinking about because I knew that would lead to this one. Okay. Just like quick refresh on the whole um thing with like um with a gay fesh in this. Um, oh, that's right. I was reading um, um, response to Milena's stuff and all that. Uh, just wanted to, I wanted to just walk away and never speak about this publicly, but I already made the choice to get involved and with new receipts, can't shake the guilt off. I've already engaged. I can't have private regrets on public behavior. As Poppy would say, 
I made big boy decisions. At this point, if Poppy is going to argue that No Flake uh, S aid her because the I I made some comment to somebody on Reddit like either last night or earlier today that um, I'm just so freaking old that it took me the longest time to just like have it finally like click um, like what people meant. You know, like, and I say long, you know, it sounds like I'm like a bit slower. <laughs> when I phrase it that way, it sounds like I'm a bit slower than I am. But, um, you know, just like it took me, you know, longer than I would like to think about for like the abbreviation of SA to click in my head for bestial ass assault um, rather than something awful as in the forum. And I still have that issue with the term goon right now because we all know what goon means in current internet slang but i still think something awful forum goons as in like you know people who spend way too much time being little dick asses on the something awful forum um <laughs> um anyway at this point, if Poppy's going to argue that No Flake essayed her because the consent was not informed, then Poppy has to own that No Flake's consent was n n neither enthusiastic nor freely given. I'm sorry, I will correct your grammar, damn it. Uh, I saw the DMs. You badgered her into the trip after she already broke up with you. And I was just like, I saw that, um, what's her face? Um, Stardust? was reading some of this on stream you know on her own stream before um before i got on so i just like you know threw out a couple little chats there and oh my gosh that this this was like it is so much more than just these little screens that leaked in january so like this is what um you know just like this whole like uh, we love you. Are you breaking up with Poppy and Penny? You know, like Poppy's altars. Penelope's altars. Uh, right before the trip, please don't. And then little um, emoji, which I guess is supposed to signify an altar speaking. Um, and, um, and Stardust was reading a part of um, one of the docs that dropped that... Just like made it seem that just like made it clear that um whatever dissociative um disorder that Poppy has it is not the classic DID. Oh, I oh never mind. I it's it's not too far from me right now. Cause um I uh in the search for looking for that um Maya Toll book I mentioned earlier that has gone a wall on me i um i was no where the hell all right i didn't think i took it out of the um okay so i opened up one of my work bags and i saw my copy of the book all right you know what i'm just going to turn on the the overhead light this is getting a this little bitty ring light thing is getting annoying um but i also need to figure out where the hell i put the thing so let's uh let's have the theme music going because i just like cued it back up no Ah, as I said last night, 
I am the only, I'm not only the first streamer to, uh, to address the, uh, Zine and Poppy receipts, but I am the only streamer to give the Zine and Poppy situation the theme song it deserves. Okay. Oh. So anyway, I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to... I'm gonna figure out something else for the lighting situation because I really, I really hate like this much light on me. Um, and like right now, how it's situated, like my face is like really shaded in. So okay, I question the seller's decision to wrap it in the way that they did. So this is a famous um, book. Well. It's since been usurped by an even more famous book um, about a woman with um, uh, what's now referred to as dissociative identity disorder. Um, at the time that this one was written, it was um, uh, called multiple personality disorder. And there is, okay, oh, lovely vintage copy. Ooh. Okay, so original copyright, 1957, by uh, Corbett H. Thigpen and Hervey M. Uh, Cleckley. So, um, first time in paperback, um, 1961 edition paperback. Um, the amazing bestseller that became a great movie with an Academy Award performance by Joanne Woodward. Uh, the Three Faces of Eve, the astounding true story of a girl whose one body lived three separate lives. Um, the most extraordinary and fascinating book of the year. Um, face number one, Eve White, loving wife and mother, considered by her husband almost too good. Uh, face number two, Eve Black, a rebellious flirt who lived only to indulge her passion for dancing, drinking, and picking up men. Face number three, Jane, entirely different from the others, in many ways the most tormented of the three. Once in a blue moon, a book hits you like this one. It is the fantastic true story of a young housewife who was three women in one body, more fascinating and success and suspenseful than most novels. An unforgettable experience. So this is um this is written as like an anonymized case study. Um, so you know, as we could tell by the you know, blurb on the back saying that um that, uh, you know, more suspenseful than most novels. So it's not a novelization of a case study like the case of Sybil, a.k.a. Shirley Mason. Now, the Shirley Mason case, that is um, extremely controversial for a number of reasons. And it's also become, um, and because of uh, some of the stuff that has since come out about the Shirley Mason case, the, uh, the video from um, Neurotransmissions, that I played some, you know, that, that I played a couple of chapters from last night. He has like a really, um, he takes a really serious look at the Sybil, um, case and, um, and he, and he goes into a, a lot more depth than a lot of the, you know, videos about the real Sybil, you know, Shirley Mason on, you know, YouTube actually do like, you know, like we're talking like a dedicated, um, video about, you know, like the expanded case study of like both before and after the Sybil book was written. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, um, Cornelia, crap, I'm forgetting the doctor's surname, but yeah, Shirley Mason was the case study for, um, Cornelia, Dr. Cornelia. Oh, all right. I'm going to pull my thing up, but, um, but yeah, that's written as like more, it, it's written like a case study with like some novelization aspects. You know, it's written as an anonymous case study. Now, the uh, the woman that it's based on has also, you know, well, had also, like she's passed away since, you know, the book was published in 57 initially. Um, she, um, Cornelia Wilbur? Okay, S-H-I-R-L-E-Y, Shirley Mason. So, um, so the reason that the Shirley Mason case is, um, okay, Shirley Ardell Mason, um, I'm reading off of Wikipedia here. Uh, 
just because it's like easier for me to read it this way. Um, was an American art teacher who was reported to have dissociative identity disorder, previously known as multiple personality disorder. Her life was purportedly described with adaptations to protect her anonymity in 1973 in the book Sybil, uh, subtitled The True Story of a Woman Possessed by 16 Separate Personalities. So already it's like, you know, it's, it's very sensationalized in the title. So that is something that like a lot of people um, with DID um, do take some issue with that. Like, you know, like, yeah, while the fame of the Sybil book did bring some um, did bring a lot of, um, recognition to the, um, to the disorder that, um, that it sensationalized it, like, disproportionately in a way, um, but also, uh, let's see, two films were, two films, really, okay, uh, one released in 1970, oh, there was a 20-07, um, remake, okay, I did not know that, Probably lifetime for all I know. All right, both the book and the films use the name Sybil Isabel Dorset to protect Mason's identity, though the 2007 remake stated Mason's name at its conclusion. Um, Mason's diagnosis and treatment under, okay, Cornelia B. Wilbur, yeah, Dr. Cornelia Wilbur, um, she was obsessed with the book Three Faces of Eve, right? Which, um, again, like it won an Academy Award um, for uh, Joanne Woodward. Yeah, Academy Award performance by Joanne Woodward. So, like, Joanne Woodward won an Oscar for this. And yet, this is the book that has since been overshadowed by a book published um, a little over 15 years later and got a uh, got a TV movie adaptation uh, starring Sally Field. Um, and part of that was because, like, um, Cornelia Wilbur... Um, she was obsessed with that book, um, The Three Faces of Eve, and um, I think only after the film adaptation, but she was obsessed with it. Um, she want and she wanted to um, she basically wanted to become just as much, if not more famous than the uh, than the two doctors, um, Corbett H. Thigpen MD and Hervey M. Cleckley MD. So like the two guys who, um, um, who, um, who worked with, um, I'll go back to, uh, Wikipedia for a sec, because, um, um, Eve White, Eve Black, and Jane are, um, sorry, a little callous bit. Okay. So, um, okay, yeah, this is going to be, like, an incredibly truncated controversy stuff. Um, let's see, three... Three faces of Eve. Really, we're going straight to the film? Okay. Um, okay. Um, okay. Uh, um, okay, based on the book of the same name, about the life of, um, of Chris Costner Sizemore. So, uh, yeah, born Christine Costner Sizemore. Um... Oh, April 4th, 1927. Oh, wow. She only died in 2016. Damn. Yeah, age 89. Okay, healthy life. But, uh, but yeah, she has since um, published her own... Um, okay, let's see. Background. Uh, despite authorities' claims to the contrary, my former alters were not fragments of my birth personality. They were entities whole in their own rights who coexisted with my birth personality before I was born, that that's a little bit of a woo-woo um, <laughs> interpretation of it. Okay. Um, before she was born. Okay, that's... um. Okay. Yep. I'm... That just sounds a little bit out there to me. Um, uh, they were not me, but they remain intrinsically related to what it means to be me. All right, that the follow-up sentence, I, I can see that it's a little bit poetic, um, but yeah, I, that makes sense. To, well, I, I also, um, I also think I mentioned last night that um, one of my sisters had schizoaffective disorder, so I kind of like, <laughs> I kind of grew up with like, um, just like kind of like naturally learning how to decipher, um, 
I call it schizophrenic logic and, you know, like the various like little like poetic turns of phrase that um, people on the bipolar to schizophrenia spectrum, you know, tend to use, um, you know, like not quite word salady stuff, but, you know, you notice this a lot, um, which I can understand why, you know, especially like in the late 90s and four time, like, you know, there, there, like there was like this you know, these allegations of like teen girls romanticizing bipolar de depression. I'm like, eh, at the same time, I can kind of understand a little bit on like why that might be because of the way that like, you know, like I said, it's like the bipolar to schizophrenia spectrum with like, you know, schizoaffective being people that's like kind of in the middle um, a bit. Um, because uh, there, there, there are some peculiar ways <laughs> that, um, that people on that spectrum will, you know, tend to, um, you know, they tend to have like their own peculiar way of phrasing the, um, you know, the world and their experiences with it, which, you know, is cool. Um, like I said, I, you know, it kind of makes me, it, it kind of puts me in this, like this weird position. Um, uh, Josh Kiss was, uh, you know, who's in chat right now was um, watching one of my streams um, earlier this year, sometime January, February, where I was like, like offering like like this little like crash course on Daniel Larson, and um, who's also like you know infamously on the schizoaffective spectrum, and um, that's uh oh gosh there goes my uh my skin coming off, um it's like my nose it's a little bit and like whoosh, um but um. But yeah, like there's, there's just like these little peculiar, you know, habits that people on that spectrum will just kind of like pick up. And so, um, so yeah, like I can, um, like I said, this, this is that, that one sentence of like, um, you know, the, uh, the personalities being separate entities who coexisted with her birth personality before she was even born. I'm like, okay, that's a little out there, but then saying that. You know, they were not me, but they remain intrinsically related to what it means to be me. That, you know, that, that I can, I can kind of see what she's saying with that, right? At least I think I can anyway. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not her. But anyway, um, in her book, I'm Eve, published 1977, and I do mean to pick up a copy of that, um, whether on eBay or one of the local used bookstores. Uh, Christine describes the, describes many phases of her life, um, Okay, yeah. So this was so her "I'm Eve" was published after Sybil, um, but uh, let's see. Earliest at ten months old was the funeral of a five-year-old cousin. She was okay. That was like kind of dramatized in the film version, but um, uh, diagnosis in the three faces of Eve. So yeah, like um, it doesn't sound like she's um she's countering or contradicting anything that um that Wilbur um not Wilbur um. Thigpen and Cleckley are saying in, in their book about her. Um, she just goes into a little bit more depth. It's just like, you know, they were, you know, um, uh, before it was called HIPAA, like they were you know, um, retaining, you know, like they, um, they did, of course, like, you know, just to like um, retain anonymity for the patient. They, um, they took, you know, some, they took some, um, they made some changes to presenting it in a book, but, um, so yeah, the book is, um, it's not written like a classic novel. It's written as like, kind of like a novelization of her, um, of her, pa of her patient file in a way, right? Um, at least that's what I've gotten from like the first couple of pages. I, you know, I, I've, I read a little bit from already, but, um, but yeah, the thing with Sybil was um, Dr. Cornelia Wilbur found a writer for Sybil before she decided, you know, on a patient to be the case study for the novel. So, like I said, Dr. Cornelia Wilbur was absolutely obsessed with the Three Faces of Eve case to the point that, like I said, she found the author for the novelization of the case study before she even had a, you know, you know, b before, before Shirley Mason was even a patient of hers, you know, to be the patient for the case study. And 
Um, and Mason has said some, um, you know, she had gone back and forth a couple of times about, um, about her experience as, um, as a, as Cornelia Wilbur's patient, but, um, a lot of things do come out fairly consistently and it does sound like, um, Shirley Mason did have, um, some, uh, some complex PTSD, CPTSD, and, um, and Dr. Wilbur basically kind of gaslighted Mason into believing she had, um, multiple personalities. Like, that's, that's what all the consistencies, um, since Dr. Wilbur's death, which was, you know, before Ms. Mason's death, um, but, uh, but yeah, like it got to the point where, uh, Shirley Mason basically became so emotionally dependent on Dr. Wilbur that she moved in with Dr. Wilbur at some point, basically becoming Wilbur's at-home caretaker later in, you know, later in Wilbur's life, you know, like, you know, you know, geriatric caretaker for, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, uh, so, so yeah, like there was a, an incredibly toxic doctor patient relationship between Dr. Cornelia Wilbur and um Shirley Mason. So that's that's where a lot of the controversy since the publication of Sybil um has come from, especially since Dr. Wilbur's death. Like th it's an incredibly controversial case. Um it apparently especially within the DID community, like just to, like doing a cursory stuff um look at things on like Reddit and um, and Tumblr and stuff, right? So, um, so yeah, like, it, it's not a typical DID case, but it became, um, it basically became, like, kind of, like, a blueprint for how, um, for at least how the public perceives DID, but even then, even then, um, the way that, uh, the way that some of the bits about, uh, Poppy's, um, about Poppy's dissociative um, issues, it does seem very atypical to even how DID is um, described within the DSM. I think Poppy has since turned to calling it OSDD, or maybe she, you know, like goes back and forth because like Poppy can't be consistent for shit, right? <laughs> like, like she can't be consistent for shit. She moves goalposts. She changes her stories just a little bit each time she tells them. Um, on the uh, on the um, Liana Kersner uh, podcast she was on a couple of weeks ago, she basically said, "Oh yeah, I told myself it was rape, but I'm gonna tell my, but I'm gonna tell you that it was a friend of mine who coincidentally uses the same name I do on my GoFundMe." Um, <laughs> I saw some comments about that from last night's stream, like that I woke up to, like when people were like rewatching it, hopefully at like two X speed. I'd hate to think you sat there listening to me for three hours. Like, you know, especially when like the first hour is me going on about nonsense that I got at five below. Um, yeah, let me, uh, let me see what, uh, some of the fun comments I got last night were. And like I said, I'm pulling this up. Like you can just you're you're watching me stream. Just go to my goddamn um just go to my goddamn YouTube page and read the comments that way. Like you're smart. Smart enough to find my stream anyway. Just finished it before this. Oh, um. Um finished it before. Finish which one before this? Um, somebody else's stream? The I don't know. Um, 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 um. Okay, wait. Can we? Um. Oh wait. You know what? Let's just. Oh yeah, somebody uh somebody says um um BL I think that's an L 2610 
It's either a lowercase L or an uppercase I. Um, I also thought the Penelope connection was weird and suspicious. I thought maybe she was referring to her alter Penny. Could that explain it? Maybe her editor is her alter? I respond, you know, a good like four hours after they made the comment. Um, oh, okay, you fell asleep during during the live. Oh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, if you're getting caught up that way. Okay, let's see. Then I respond four hours after that person because like they made that comment. Oh, yeah, while I was asleep. And that was 13 hours ago. Um, I don't know what to think about the one editor, the one that isn't Schlebitty slash Joshua Vern as per his SoundCloud. It's possible, even very likely, that this other editor actually exists and just nuked her Twitter for some reason. I've seen the older videos when Zed and or P were doing their own edits, and they've definitely had someone else editing in the more recent years. Plus, Poppy is not the kind of person to just nuke one of her Twitter accounts. She'd make it private instead. She's just not that kind of person. She's a narcissist, and completely deleting one of her alternate accounts on any platform would... Um, would like basically be an admission to ha to a loss of control. I'm also over ninety percent, ninety five percent certain that I have seen the of uh, this other person active on Twitter before the account was deleted. But of course, like it's difficult to search that if you know, well, at least on the browser anyway. Whatever. I'm, you know, I might search it later through my alt account where that I have for creeping on. <laughs> I like barely check that unless I see, you know, like, somebody else on my Twitter timeline say something. It's not like I'm obsessively looking or anything. It's just, like, I had a couple alt Twitter accounts. One of them happened to be following the, you know, at least the uh, the main Zane and Poppy um, Twitter before, you know, they blocked me. Um, and because it was an alt account that was just coincidentally, you know, following a few people i was just like yeah whatever i'll keep you know i'll just like keep that going just <laughs> you know just in case it's useful just in case like looking back at this turns useful or something anyway so uh i'm also over 90 percent 95 percent certain that i have seen this other person active on twitter before the account was deleted the question i have is whether or not this editor uses the name penelope i mean sure it's also possible that Poppy and this other editor had that conversation, but Poppy also knows that this editor in question nuked her Twitter and wants to remain anonymous relative to this event. And Poppy just spit out the first name that came to her mind, which, since Poppy is a pathological narcissist, um, was accidentally one of the names she herself uses. It's technically possible... But it's just convoluted enough that I doubt it falls within the realm of probability described by Occam's Razor. It's possible that I'm wrong. But, you know, that I'm wrong that Penelope is Poppy and, ergo, Poppy told herself that it was rape, right? But I think it's far more likely that Poppy, that Poppy simply lied about the conversation with her friend and editor, uh, Penelope, as we saw in the transcription, <laughs> as we saw in the trans, you know, the auto transcription, um, that YouTube does, uh, there was a pause with where Poppy said, my friend and editor, uh, Penelope, like that was in there. That was in there. In fact, like just to, uh, oh wait, did I, oh, that's right. I did put that on my Twitter. Um, Okay, anyway, okay, so we're done, like, going over this, so, like, yeah, you've seen Gave, so there's a thing with Noah Flake that was just, like, just earlier than the thing, right? But, uh, uh, pa -pa 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 okay, so, yeah, and then there's all the stuff here from January with Gayfesh, um, so, yeah, like, this was a thing. Okay, just go back again. Are you okay? He's coughing a little bit. Sounds okay now. All right. All right, and here's like how Twitter... It does not let you search stuff easily anymore from the browser. Um, this is not relevant to now. Um, should I sequel? I don't care about Star Wars. I really don't. Um, 
Hello, Twitter. What's going on? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, shit. Uh, Brianna Wu should be embarrassed by this. She really should. She really should. Ben Shapiro reposted Brianna Wu. That's um, that's a bit embarrassing. Uh, oh, re retweeting from Alexander. Hey, y'all, this is the time-stamped VOD of the conversation about Zayna and Poppy. If you want to wait till Monday, the edited segment will go live on the channel. Oh, okay. I did not... I'm following Luxander, but I did not see this thing yet today because Twitter just does not like to tell you stuff that you tell it to tell you. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to... Um, God damn it. All right. Okay. Right click. Really? No open in new tab with this? Okay. But it's a it's a YouTube thing. Dang it. Will it No, of course not. That would be simple. Okay. Seriously? We're gonna be playing in here. Damn it. Okay, I'm going to pause that real quick because, um, wait, you know what? Hold on. This will open up, up in a new tab. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. pause it real quick. Now pause it real quick, you son of a bitch. I swear to God. <laughs> like, if I thought... Elon Musk was, okay, it's not going to autoplay. I thought Elon Musk was smart enough to be intentionally making Twitter all but unusable for, for some reason. But I don't think he's smart enough. I think he's just fucking stu stupid. I think he's just that fucking So, okay, this is one of the things that I saw earlier today. Okay, so it wasn't like just before I woke up or anything like that. But uh, I did see this um, long before um, tonight's stream. And uh, Ms. Molina um, pointed out how um, how uh, how Sage lied about how far she was willing to go to take down Ruan 1334, being myself. This is what they do. This is what they teach their acolytes to do. Be as vicious as possible in private. Then... When the public frowns on it, darvo, darvo, darvo. Uh, Gayfesh said just before that, because it's a retweet, uh, note her stating that she was only going after two specific things. I sat on this screenshot for a while because it was provided by Lumi, who was still in their Discord at the time, but she's okay with me being Fesh um, sharing this screenshot now. And I had kind of heard about this uh, from Lumi over DMs, because, um, oh, God damn it. Like, some of this is, like, very, very slight psoriasis plaques, too. That's why I'm trying to be tender, and that's why there are some bits that are looking kind of scabby, um, if you can't see from the current lighting right now, um, thread so yeah like i'm sure you, you all remember ages tweet back in like january when it, it, these dumb shits decided to go for me um that uh you know sage was all like oh he's still got paypal and cash app um you know we're not trying to take away his income completely he can still get donos that way but no like first link she uh she provides is uh the uh the PayPal me um slash Ruan uh and of course my Patreon my Facebook music page which you know like barely accepts the restream um request to stream that way so like wh what's what's the point of that it's just like you know where I like share music updates and memes like. <laughs> 
I'm, you know, and like by memes, I'm speaking like broadly, like, you know, like shit from like, and you know, like, um, like antique photos that people post in groups and on Facebook and stuff like, oh, damn it. Hold on. There is a big chunk of, all right. It's getting a little bit irritating. Of course, it's like right in the line of my glasses. So it's visually annoying too. All right. Report each of these for targeted harassment for some reasons. You know, like, even though, like, my, like, I, I was using, like, none of these platforms to harass people. Um, all I was doing was streaming with, you know, and showing off on Twitter and showing off, you know, city to city map directions. Like, I had to stop myself from saying map quest because I'm old as shit. And I still sometimes use that as a colloquialism, even though map quest itself is like all but dead. So it's like, I'm showing city to city driving directions. And as we saw in last night's stream, I clearly went through like such diabolical lengths as going to like their own social media pages where they shared their city, where the PO box is at. You know, this this was this was the this this was the extent of my doxing someone. It wasn't harassment, especially when you consider that um um the even still the Zane and Poppy YouTube channel has a minimum of ten times the subscribers I do. Like harassment does to some extent involve like a power differential. Like, uh, let's, uh, you know, just to, like, illustrate this, let me, like, tabs real quick. So, so, uh, let's see, open up the thing, view my channel, and I'm gonna have to pause a thing real quick because my, my, uh, my, my Mid-Atlantic accent was even, even thicker when I met intro video that I made, and I've got this set to, um, oh, really? Not gonna autoplay right now? Okay, that's... That's nice that that stopped somehow. So as we see, 1. Point not 1,000 subscribers. 1. Point not 1K subscribers. And um, and so just to com compare, um, uh, Zane and Poppy. So there I have over 1,010 subscribers. And we go to copy, and that is not what I, I clicked on the goddamn channel name to send me to the channel page. Why does YouTube do stupid things? I don't know, probably. More, you know, I don't know, it's probably justifiable reason why so Anyway, as we see here, here they've got. Please stop fucking playing shit. I swear to God. Okay, and as we see, Z and Poppy have literally ten times my audience. They have literally ten times the subscribers I do. If harassment, you know, like at. If not by a legal definition, then by a psychological definition, requires some kind of power differential being exploited. It is not possible for me to be the one harassing Zane and Poppy. In fact, this has been shown many, it has been shown many times, many times that they are the ones sending people after me. I'm nobody. I'm nobody. I have barely over a thousand subscribers on YouTube. I have half the Twitter followers the Zane and Poppy main Twitter does. I'm a fucking nobody. Like, <laughs> like even 
people in my local area barely recognize the time. And I'm told I'm a very recognizable person. But like, you know, like I said, if if not by a, by, by a legal definition, then by, you know, by a psychological definition, it is not possible for me to harass them. Even by a legal definition, I am not harassing them because I do not tell my one-tenth the audience size that they have that, you know, oh, you should go bother these people. No, all I've ever said was, hey, these Zane and Poppy live relatively close to me. The, 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 the township where their P.O. box is at is depending on the traffic con depending on the traffic satellite um between a you know depending on the reports from the traffic satellite between a 15 and 30 minute drive from my city that's all i've ever said that's all i've ever said and yeah i made a perhaps you know like the, the risk I took was calculated, but unfortunately I'm bad at math. So yeah, like I'm willing to own that, you know, like maybe it was a stupid idea, especially in hindsight to, you know, pull up the city to city map quest directions from Ann Arbor to Hamburg, Michigan, where their PO box is at. How do I know where their PO box is at? Well, first off, before, be before, um, first off, like, um, the the most thing that had that city um, associated with Poppy. Oh yeah, you know, like in case you heard the Liana Kersner, um podcast that Poppy was and Zena were on a couple of weeks ago. Um, Poppy references like, oh, my friend and editor Penelope. Um, nobody can find this other person named Penelope from their community. Like from their from Poppy's Discord community from the Poppy and Zena Discord or you know audience whatever this other person named Penelope does not show up. The two editors credited on their YouTube videos when uploaded, like there are two editors credited. One, um, um, both of them have like nuked nuked their Twitter accounts. Um, the one um credited as Schlibity. S C H L I B B I T Y something like that. I don't know. We'll we'll look at that in another in a minute. We'll look at that again in a minute for reasons. Um, but yeah, um, his um, um, his his uh, his credit is linked to a YouTube page. The YouTube page um, had its most recent upload of apparently his own music. He's a fairly decent musician. It's sucks that he's associated with poppy somehow but um but yeah so um his youtube page um his most recent upload was from about four years ago it's some of his original music um you open up the little um you know see more link thing on the uh on the on the channel page and it sent and it offers up three links one is a twitter account that has since been nuked um then is a soundcloud account which I'll get back to. And the third is an Instagram account, which has also been nuked. The SoundCloud page, um, you follow that, and it says his name is Joshua Vern. Um, he also looks like someone who would go by the name Joshua Vern rather than Penelope, unless we're thinking, like, this is some kind of, like, you know, thought slime going by Mildred situation where... Um, Okay, that's a choice that Mildred made, and um, I do also have like an IRL mutual friend with Mildred, um, and um, oh shit, I forget if they're non-binary or just like ambivalently cis. I'll just I'll just say they. Um, that's just my friend groups in this area, um, the Greater Metro Detroit area. Like the, like the the mutual friend that Thought Slime and I have. Um, they are definitely like much, much closer to Detroit than either I or Poppy am. But, um, but here, here's my diabolical means of like getting, getting Poppy's city. That was, well, you know, like I said, the most recent thing I had seen with the, with the city name of Hamburg, Michigan associated with Poppy was, uh, 
was on her GoFundMe that she is still actively throwing at people to go donate to. Um, uh, she has since changed the city to her uh, her former hometown of Lansing, Michigan. But um, Lansing is a really weird city because like parts of Lansing, Michigan are in Livingston County, Michigan, and other parts of Lansing are in Ingham County, Michigan. I think when Best X and I were living in Lansing, Michigan, um, and I moved back to Ipsy from Lansing in 2014, because Nigel was two and a half, almost two and a half. Um, I think we were on the Ingham County side of Lansing. Um, I think, I think. But, um, but yeah, um... Poppy still lives in Livingston County, Michigan, uh, albeit a different city, a uh, different city with a much higher median income than Ypsilanti, Michigan has. Um, I went on on Twitter about this, that the median income for Ypsilanti, Michigan, where I live, like the median household income is about 40K a year. The median household income where in, in the city where Poppy and Zena currently live is about 95k per household per calendar year. The lower end of household income according to census stats for where for the city where Poppy actually lives because it's not Hamburg. It's not Hamburg, you know, like 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 these two are at least that smart enough to, you know, get a PO box in one of the one of the next cities over, much like I have, like my PO box is in Ann Arbor. Um, I'm in Ypsilanti. I mean, yeah, I'm fairly open about the fact that I'm in Ypsilanti because, you know, I know that most of my audience um, on various social media stuff has always been overwhelmingly local to me. So you know, I um when uh. When I was still doing my radio show, um, when the radio show still had an online station <laughs> that it was associated with, uh, the station has since had to close had to close down due to lack of monies. But that's another story for another time. Anyway, I would I would um, I would announce local events on my old radio show, right? So. Um, even though there was an online presence and um, and a provably international audience for my old radio show, but, you know, I would still announce local events. Anyway, so, yeah, I'm fairly open about the fact that I live in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Right next door to Ypsilanti, Michigan is Ann Arbor, Michigan. But in my defense, in my defense, um, I do not drive. I take the bus. Um, and my post office, there are... Um, um, there are three, um, um, there are at least three, but three, like, you know, big, like, you know, independent building post offices in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And the one that I go to is right next to the main bus stop where there is security, um, 24 seven. Um, and also, so it's like, it's like, right next door when you go like this way from the post office, but then like when you go next door, the other way at my post office, um, downtown Ann Arbor is a federal building that has federal security 24 seven. So I do not mind, <laughs> you know, like, you know, like if somebody wants to follow me, you know, like from the post office onto the bus, and follow me home that way, um, it will be, it, it, they will have to be, it, it is very hard to be inconspicuous about it that way, right? So I feel fairly safe admitting that I live in Ypsilanti, Michigan, rather than Ann Arbor, you know, that's fair enough. But yeah, like, I've, I've sensed all of this nonsense has been going down. I've encountered a few other, like, former friends of, you know, and when I say other, I mean, like, you know, I'm, like, talking, 
I, I, I'm speaking relative to like the people I know from online, but I've also, you know, cause like Zane and Poppy and I, um, were never friendly, but I did either 2018, 19 ish, or very late in 2021 after, you know, the club started opening back up again. I literally introduced myself to them at the club, not like fully recognizing them from YouTube, but you know, like I'm just one of those people. If I'm a regular somewhere and I see somebody there for like the first time and they don't seem especially busy or something, I am a generally friendly person. I will introduce myself to damn near anybody, you know, especially if you're going to one of my, you know, local haunts or whatever, right? So, you know, that is like, and, um, you know, so uh, as I said last night, um, I pay attention to the world around me. Um, you know, I, I even said that on Twitter last night. I pay attention to the world around me. How I tried to find her home, which, like, provably never happened. Not on live stream, not on Twitter. Um, because all of my, um, arca all of my, you know, like, archived live streams are all still public. All of the relevant streams that, you know, um, that, 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 uh, that, that Xena and Poop Bunny, because, like, you know, her, uh, her, her, her logic for how, for, like, why I was trying to, do what, for why I was doxing her, trying to find her, like, this is, like, Soul Bunny levels of delusional, you know, definitions of doxing, right? So, like I said, I pay attention to the world of assist. I'm a fairly, I'm, I'm a fairly empathic person. Um, I do, um, want to, um, one of these days, um, take that HD tutor, um, test thing that he's devised for, you know, at least fitting his definition of, um, of narcissist, narcissistic, normal, or empath, because I am kind of curious, just because, um, a number of the people I, I've known, um, primarily, I'm thinking worse, um, um, and the reason I let, I let, one of the reasons I latch onto HD Tutor so much with all this is, um, 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 worst X, um, was, a. Uh, it is indeed diagnosed with NPD and uh, strong antisocial tendencies. HG Tutor um, has, you know, um, at least, you know, it says he is diagnosed uh, with narcissistic personality disorder and antisocial personality disorder um, in his term, narcissistic, you know, classic narcissistic psychopath. Um, so, yeah, like, he he's at least... Uh, described himself as similar enough to Worst X that um, it's offered me a lot of insight into what the hell um, going on with uh, Worst X. So yeah, like, here's how I remember that um, Poppy's legal name is Jess, because, oh my god, how did I discover this information? How did I discover this great arcane information that Poppy is also known as Jessica or Jess. Oh my gosh, how did I find this? What kind of hacksaws, skills, skillsors did I did I did did I did I, did I did I like you know get out of somebody? Like who did I hire for this? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, Jessica's go fund me. Oh my gosh, what elite hacksaws, skillsors did I did I accomplish to figure this out? Oh my gosh. Gosh, it can't be because she put the info on there herself, can it? Oh my gosh, anything but that. Anything but that. No! Oh no! How did that happen? Oh my gosh, clearly I must have hacked her account and did all this. But yeah, like, here's how I knew, here's how I initially knew that uh, Poppy's P.O. Box is in Hamburg, Michigan. Oh my gosh, is it? Is it true? 
Am I simply someone who pays attention to the world around me? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Letters and fan art can be sent to P.O. Box 666. Um, I really hope this is at like a UPS store or some shit because I, I, I'm just... Oh my gosh. Hamburg, Michigan, 48139. Um, okay, hon. Um, if you go on a Wikipedia, like the zip code evens that shit out. Um, and yeah, Hamburg Township, Michigan, that's, uh, that, that's, that's, that's another fairly, um, well off financially er that's another area that's fairly well off financially so yeah like if if uh if zine and poppy are, are legitimately broke after poppy literally quit her job because she would rather make a donkey out of herself on the internet than um oh crap i forgot to switch tabs again all right all right here we go again here we go again here i am forgetting to switch tabs yeah. oh my gosh i need your help Jessica's GoFundMe slash please share TGT. That means trans girl therapist. But uh, as a number of people have pointed out, it also has the uh, unfortunate um, side effect of being read as trans girl the artist <laughs> dot org. <laughs> like that's that, that's very unfortunate. But yeah, oh my gosh, what is this? What is this? Letters and art can be sent to PO Box six six six. Hamburg, Michigan, 48139, which, like I said, go to Wikipedia. This is technically Hamburg Township, Michigan, but, you know, the zip code evens it all out. Um, Hamburg Township and even, like, Hamburg... Yeah, well, I mean, Hamburg is, like, a suburb of Hamburg Township. Goddamn bonkers. But, but anyway, so uh, th this is another area... Um, you know, much, much like actual, uh, current city of res, um, she and I literally know enough of the same people, IRL. Why? We're local to each other. In fact, like I said, you go to Wikipedia and look up Hamburg, Michigan or Hamburg Township, Michigan, you know, like going by the zip code. Um, she lives just over the county, or at least Hamburg Township is just over the county line from me. Um, well, okay, not from me, from me, but um, but uh, but yeah, like so, Washtenaw County, um, Hamburg, Hamburg Township is uh, just over the county line in Livingston County. So like, Washtenaw's here, like Ann Arbor. Well, so like, um, I don't know. Um, let's see. All right. Let's say that this is like Washtenaw County. It's not like a good representative shape, but like Washtenaw County is here. Um, and I will take my Tiger Balm. Livingston County is here because I think things through very far ahead of time before I go on stream. So like Hamburg Township is right about hereabouts on this very, very high tech visual aid I'm using here. Washtenaw County, Livingston County, Hamburg Township, where Poppy's P.O. Box is. Now, relative to Washtenaw County, um, um, Ann Arbor is hereabouts, Ypsilanti is hereabouts, so, um, and then we've got my wallet for Wayne County right here, and did... This is like way off scale. So Detroit is hereabouts in Wayne County. I am physically like, you know, by miles and a much shorter driving distance too. Um, and the way that works out is because Michigan highways are just nonsense. And even though I don't drive, I understand like distance by mileage and driving time do not necessarily, um, you know, do not necessarily like um, line up together. Um, just because like drive limits, freeways and nonsense like that. So like Detroit is right here and then there's Windsor right here and there's literally a bridge, you know, like, <laughs> like when I say to people like, no, Detroit is across the street from Canada. I am dead serious. Detroit is hereabouts. And then there's like, you know, like a little straight on, um, on, uh, on Lake Erie and then like 
Lake Ontario. And then like Windsor is right here. So like there's a bridge, boom, like basically across the street from, from Canada, from Windsor, Ontario. I am not joking. I am like, I am physically closer to Canada right now where I am at than people in Seattle are like, I'm closer to Windsor, Ontario than people in Seattle are close to Vancouver, British Columbia, also Canada, right? So like, like just find the maps yourself. If I brought up the maps, uh, Poppy's going to say that I doxed Vouch somehow. <laughs> I think, Mel I think, uh, I, I think damn it, Malcolm uh, read off that tweet that I made <laughs> to that effect from the doc, from the, from the document that dropped the other day. Um, I think he read that off yesterday. So yeah, like, like I said, like relative, like this is not by scale, but like Wayne County here, Detroit here, Poppy, because I pay attention to the world around me, including YouTubers I watch, whose videos I watch. Um, I remember that Poppy and Xena reference, you know, oh, well, go, well, you know, I guarantee you, we go to this one part of Detroit where things are actually dangerous. Burp, 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 burp. Like that, that's like a, a near exact phrasing from some old video that I now forget what it was. It was when I was still at the old apartment, if I recall correctly, when I was watching it. But, uh, but yeah, so I was like under the impression that Hamburg Township was closer to Detroit than I am, but like there's all these little rinky dink little towns in um in um Wayne County and um um um, um. and then there's like another um Wayne County and Wood County and there's another one uh that's also got parts that's considered the greater metro Detroit area. But yeah like I'm actually like physically and by driving distance closer to Detroit than Zane and Poppy ever have lived right um <laughs> and then there's the fact that i actually have briefly lived in detroit and uh, honestly i like i i'm sure just like looking at um the city where i know that they live because we have we know the same people like we are local to each other i have no interest in knowing where her house is because i guarantee that like you know i forget if it's like a house house or if it's you know, just like a really swank apartment. I don't remember what they, you know, I don't remember like their current story on what it is. Like, I'm sure they're going to change their minds tomorrow on what it is, but you know, like I have no interest in seeing it because I'm sure like even if it's another one bed, that like, even if they have like a one bedroom apartment in the, the current, you know, city where they actually do live, you know, which is not Hamburg township. That's just where their PO box is at. Um, I'm sure it is because, I'm sure, like, even if it is, like, another, like, a one-bedroom apartment like I've got with my cats, I'm sure it's considerably bigger than my one-bedroom apartment. I'm sure, like, whatever monthly rent or mortgage they're paying right now, like, uh, like, back in 2020, I got my cruth from, um, from, uh, um, not the, uh, hello, Phoebe. Phoebe's rolling. Phoebe actually likes belly rubs, unlike most cats. Like, She's very particular about, like, where on the belly she likes the belly rub. Like, you can't go too far down on the belly. But, you know, like, when you're, like, upper chest to, like, mid underside range. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, uh, but my truth, my, uh, my alto truth when I got that, um, from, uh, my rent rebate check that I get, like, from Michigan rent rebate thing, um, which, you know, even on Social Security Disability... I am, you know, entitled to file my taxes to get my rent rebate, you know, from the uh, state of Michigan. I decided to splurge and get myself a, an Alto Cruz. At that time, my rent was um, $575 a month. My Cruz cost me $710. I can guarantee that, like, well, I don't know. I've heard some weird stuff about, like, how um, in certain parts of Michigan, mortgage can actually be, like, much cheaper than even my section eight rent is right now. Um, which just like that, that just sounds wrong somehow. But then again, we're talking about a fairly swank area of Livingston County, Michigan that, like I said, like you look like, like just look up, um, Hamburg township where their PO box is at. Wikipedia will tell you the median income 
which is about on par with the city where they actually live. Uh, like I said, like I have no interest in knowing where they actually live, like whether it's like a full like detached house rather than an apartment. Like e even if it's an apartment, even if it is hypothetically a one bedroom apartment, I can guarantee you it is going to be so much nicer than this apartment I've got now that I will want to vomit, right? Like if they're actually broke after, you know, after Poppy decided that she would rather make a donkey out of herself on the internet than, you know, keep her job as a therapist. And, you know, since then she's admitted to committing a number of HIPAA violations that, you know, her license is up for renewal in May. I know I'm not the only person co seriously considering making some calls to, um, to, to, the, to the powers that be about how she's been conducting herself online and how this stands glaringly at odds with, you know, with somebody who should be a licensed therapist. And not only that, the number of HIPAA violations that she will gladly admit to and then say, yup, and I'll do it again. Because she's on her shoe on head arc, I guess. Um, so, uh, uh, so yeah, if she's readily admitting to people, she will gladly recommit HIPAA violations. No, she does not deserve to be licensed. And so, uh, so yeah, like with all that considered, if, if those two are legitimately broke, it's their own damn fault, especially poppies because, you know, well, I mean, Xena could theoretically work. They just choose not to like, I'm sorry. There are ways to manage migraines. Um, you can at least have a work from home position. Um, Best X does that with Liquid Web, where I know because, um, and I know this because, well, I know this not only because I know my Best X works at Liquid Web in Lansing, but um, I do know um, Zane and Poppy's, like, I know both of their legal names, which I'm not going to drop uh, because that's, like, that's not my place to do. But, um, but yeah, um, a relative, I don't know what sort of relative, uh, but it has, at least I don't remember what sort of relative because like best X is still like, I don't know. He's, he's, uh, one of these days I'm going to do an upload that I've been planning for a while. Um, or at least a series of uploads that I'm going to call the ex boyfriend complaint list. Um, uh, best X has issues. Like there's a number of reasons he's best X, right? So I don't remember exactly all of the conversation, you know, and he was being a little bit vague about it too, but I, I know that, uh, best X works with a relative of, of Xena's. So like, like I said, like when I say that, that I know some of the same people that these two know, like, like, no, that's just a statement of fact. This is a statement of fact. That's what comes with, you know, living in the same area as someone else but me admitting that on stream like even to my my tiny ass audience and i know like most of you people who are watching right now on stream um i know most of you most most of you eight are probably not like subscribed you should subscribe though you should subscribe i gotta meet stuff usually um and when I say neat stuff, usually, I mean, like, you know, I, I find this a little bit boring right now, but at the same time, it's like what everybody's talking about. So might as well, like, you know, beef it up for the algorithm a little bit. Right. But, uh, yeah, like when I'm not dealing with complete, when, when I'm not dealing with com complete idiots on the internet who are local to me, um, want to play victim because I pay attention to the world around me and thus I have deduced through the power of facts and logic facts that they share with the internet you know such as what city their PO box is in right like like I don't know where they live but I do know in which city they live because you know I know some of their former friends IRL um, 
my best ex works with a relative of Zena's. Um, and I know this through a number of conversations that I've had with best ex and, you know, a number of other people. So, uh, so yeah, I pay attention to the world around me. That's not doxing. That's having a sense of like just basic empathy and care for the people that you interact with, you know, even if it's, you know, quote unquote parasocially and like, this whole situation has given people a really weird idea of what parasociality is. Um, and this is where I will find some fault with like some of the stuff Gayfesh has said. Like I said, uh, he's been play fair. In fact, he has been far more fair, at least early on anyway, he was far more fair to Poppy than she deserved at the time because like his first version um, Mix Dizzy was watching with me in like one of my earlier streams from January. Um, so yeah, like Gayfesh's earliest um, tweets about this included a like a very condensed, and when I say condensed, I mean like you know he clipped out in um let me uh let me think because because I still got uh, the uh, the Gayfesh Twitter up a bit. oh wait that's right I'm gonna have to like search that again. I don't want to search that again, but you know like basically um. When, uh, oh, wait. Is it, oh, shit. From, um, from the thing. We've got only another hour, though, before I should, uh, um, pack up for the night and feed the cats their dinner. I know that's not the only reason Phoebe is hanging out here on the bed. She also does, like, she also does, like, some pettings and scratchings. But, uh. But yeah, I know, I know. Don't worry. It's, I know, I know you're a very sweet little lady cat. But yeah, like, I pay attention to the world around me. That is not doxing. That's because, like, I have a fairly decent memory for faces I've met. Um, and therefore, I remember. I have actually, like, you know, briefly met, as in, like, I introduced myself. And I think I hung around a little bit, you know, like, um... You know, in that general area, why? Well, because I think, I think I introduced myself because they were talking to somebody that I, you know, knew a little bit better, and so like, you know, and like you do at the nightclub, you know, you go and you see, you, you go, you go, you know, around like see your friends and say hi, and you, you know, you see people you haven't seen before, and you're a regular at that club, and you introduce yourself, whatever. You know, and I've got a very good memory for faces, not so much for names. Um, <laughs> it will take me ages to. Oh my gosh. Um, um, my, uh, my, my local boy thing situation, I kept brain farting on their name for most of a year. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like we've got this nebulously defined situation and I was literally brain farting on their name for most of a year. Like that is, that is how bad I can be with names sometimes. Um, and I didn't come clean about it earlier because, you know, like, I'm in my 40s. I am slightly older than Poppy. Uh, and and it, it can be kind of embarrassing to admit that forgetting the name of somebody that you are sending very flirty, um, you know, that, that you've been very flirty with in person and you are exchanging flirty texts and photographs over, like, you know, DMs on things. It, it can be embarrassing to admit at some point, oh shit, I think I forgot your name. And I know you told me. <laughs> like, so yeah, like I just kind of wing it sometimes. But uh, yeah, that's um, the, 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 the joys of living with poorly managed ADHD. But that's another story for another time. Anyway. So as I said, I pay attention to the world around me. There's a, no dictionary in the world that will say, oh yeah, that sounds like doxing someone. Because it's not. All it is is just like, oh hey, yeah, that dude's got a pretty good memory for faces and for shit that he reads, such as, you know, description boxes on your YouTube videos, such as, um, 
you know, the GoFundMe that, you know, you share with everybody on Twitter, like, every other week or so, like, all that means, all, all it means that I remembered that she's got a P.O. box in Hamburg Township, Michigan, is, it, it means that I pay attention to other people, unlike Poppy. Like, it's, it's clear Poppy does not actually pay attention to other people, uh, because if she did, she would have noticed that, that, uh, that, that Noflake was being very unreceptive to Poppy and Xena badgering her for hours and hours on end about, you know, not ending the relationship before coming out, you know, so that Poppy could have, like, a three-day-long fuck fest while Zena sat in the Sneeko chair. Not enough people acknowledge the fact that Poppy and Zena had numerous times through all of these, you know, through all of these leaked, documented, you know, texting with Noah Flake, very few people seem to give this the, this fact the acknowledgement it deserves in that they consistently refer to a hotel room, singular. Both Zayn and Poppy were going out of state to meet with Noah Flake in a singular hotel room. Oh, we can't refund the hotel room. You know, we, we have to come out regardless then so why not just like meet up to bang um a singular hotel room not enough people give that the attention it deserves because this means that xena was in the sneeko chair xena is the sneeko of the poppy cool one might even say xena is the zico of the poppy cool I want that to meme. I want that to meme. Hashtag Zico of the Poppy Cule. Somebody do that. Somebody get this going. This has to meme. This has to meme. Like I will not like okay. Like if you're if if you're if you're a Kiwi farmer, um, first off, yikes, I feel bad for you and how you must feel about yourself to spend that much time on that site. This does not mean you cannot be helped, but if you wish to like extend an olive branch of solidarity, you know, from 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 one from from one dipshit who's been online way longer than he has any right to be, I I offer you the olive branch. Like, you know, if 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 you have found that, you know, like if you're watching this whether live or after the fact and you decide, "Hey, yeah, the, the way you're putting that and the way that you are, like, bringing up, like, you know, sometimes, like, forgetting to switch tabs visible, but, you know, whatever. It, it's a thing. It happens. It's not, yeah, I, I'm not bringing in a regular income of this. Yes! Yes! Josh Kiss! Hashtag Zico of the Poppy Kill! Yes! I want this to meme! Like, like if, if, if you wish to, if, if you are a Kiwi farmer and you wish to reform... And, you know, at, at least become, you know, you know a, a mildly, you know, like a mildly tolerable <laughs> dipshit who's just like kind of fascinated with nonsense and weird people on the internet. Like, I don't know, I compare myself as having more like a Howard Stern level fascination with um, the, uh, the, the classic lol cows, like, like. Like Chris Chan, I have technically been aware of Chris Chan since before something awful found out about Chris Chan. And something awful knew about Chris Chan before 4chan knew about Chris Chan, right? And the reason that I know that I've known about Chris Chan for technically that long is because um uh summer 2004, I was briefly living in Charlottesville, Virginia. Um please don't ask me why, but I remember I, I remember the year because I remember that birthday. And I think I might technically be an offender in that state. In my defense, though, um, he was almost 18, right? And I thought, and, um, and I was in my early 20s. So, like, it could have been worse. 
it could have been worse. And, you know, since then I'm just like, yeah, a sense then, especially like, especially like in the last couple of years, like I have felt like a dirty old chicken hawk when I realized like a couple of years ago that, you know, like I was kind of getting flirty with this guy at Necto in downtown Ann Arbor and he was kind of cute. And I start talking to him because he's wearing a Manic Street Preachers t-shirt. And then like halfway, you know, then like after like, you know, chatting, you know, very flirtingly with like, um, you know, for like, a, you know, like five minutes or so, I notice he's got like big Sharpie X's on both hands. And then I suddenly ask, straight edge or, and he says, oh yeah, I'm 19. And I'm like, oh my God, I, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You, you are, you are very, you're, you're, you're pretty cool. You are fairly attractive, but I, I'm like, you know, like I said, this was a couple years ago and I'm like, I'm like 42 and I just, I, I, I now suddenly feel like a dirty old man and I want to go like wash myself and apologize profusely. And he's like, Oh, come on. It's okay. And I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, technically. Yes. But <laughs> like, like just because it's legal doesn't mean it's not also gross. Right. Like, like age of consent in Michigan is 16. That's not like, oh, well, yeah, 16. Like, oh, but only if you're like 18 or 19. And I'm like, no, no, no. Age of consent means age of consent, right? Like, <laughs> like, 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 like what you are talking about is underage exceptions to age of consent. Michigan age of consent is 16. Now, yes, um, there is an asterisk on that wherein like, um, 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 the asterisk says that, um, if the older party is more than, and that's how I, and this is how I remember this three years and three months older and is in a position of assumed or explicit, um, authority. So if it's like, um, so if like, if you're like, um, well, a lot of, um, in, in Ann Arbor, a lot of high school kids will start taking classes at Washtenaw Community College, um, as like, you know, part, so like they'll spend like, you know, like half the day at high school at, um, Huron or Pioneer or what's the third one called? I don't know, but they'll like spend like half the day at like say Pioneer High School and then take the bus and spend the other half school day taking classes at Washtenaw Community College, right? And so like they're 16 and they're taking classes at WCC. And one of the reasons that I know about the, the asterisk to the 16 plus age of consent in Michigan is because <laughs> an old friend of mine was 17 years old, but already working as a TA at WCC because he, um, he was homeschooled up through the age of 16. And then he, um, and then he took one last semester and it turned out that he like, from his homeschool years, he had enough credits to graduate early if he, you know, like took us, you know, like a semester. So like, it's like one semester. So it's like half a year of school at Pioneer High. Um, I didn't know him from high school. I, I knew him like when I was in my thirties and doing a, um, and doing like a board game night, you know, for, uh, the local goth scene. So it was just like, you know, it was kind of like an all ages thing because it was at, at a local game shop. So that's how I met him. It was just like, you know, it's like stuff for, you know, people to do like all ages though. I, you know, because like I was, you know, um, well, first off it was at a game shop. So it's like, yeah, you could come over there. But at the same time as like, I was always like kind of careful about like teenagers if they wanted to like, you know, um, like go out for coffee after, you know, like, you know, like after the game store closed, if we wanted to like, you know, take the rest of the game to like a coffee shop nearby, I was just like, I have to like, you know, contact your parents if, you know, it, especially if you're under 16, just because I do not need the hassle of, you know, anything like that. Like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a very like flamboyantly goth punk, you know, openly visibly queer guy. I don't need, you know, any kind of accusations thrown my way, um, about stuff. But yeah, so like I met him at a board game night that I was doing. So that's like why I was hanging out with a 17 year old in my thirties. Cause like we met at a board game night and, um, and I knew just from talking to him online that he was going to, that, um, he was a TA at WCC, Washtenaw Community College. 
So I thought he was older than 17 for like the first couple months. And then I find out he's 17 and he tells me that he learned about the asterisk to age of consent in Michigan. Um, when he started seeing his girlfriend who was 19 at the time when they first got together and she was a student at WCC in one of the classes that he would TA for. And that's how they met. So like he was the younger one, but he was also the one in a position of relative authority but at the same time, they were like, you know, um, just a little over two years apart in age. So like, <laughs> so like the asterisk doesn't apply on two levels now. But, you know, if um, if she were the TA and he were the student, um, then it would just kind of be like towing the line because like, you know, it's just a little over a two year age difference. But if she were, say, 21 and he were 17 at the time and she was the ta and he was the student then it would be outside age of consent because she's a ta not because she's 21 right so um well she's a ta and she's 21 but he's 17 so like you know she's so it's not because she's 21 alone but it's because of you know like some legalese in there. So that's why I know so much about the Michigan age of consent laws. Right. So like I say to the, I say to the 19 year old, like, no, no, I feel like a dirty old chick, dirty old school chicken hawk right now. And like, just because it's legal doesn't mean it's not creepy. Right. So like, like, no. So like I said, like 20 odd four, I'm not going to say, Oh, well, it was a different time. I mean, it was 20 years ago and we were both at the punk bar at the same time. Um, we were both at the same punk concert at the same time. Um, you know, clearly he was in there with, you know, some falsified documents. So, you know, like I said, if, if his, if, if his, if his mother knew I might technically be an offender, but all things considered, it was like, it, it was a, it was, it was a situation where, um, you know, like he was almost, 18 um and i was in my early 20s so like i'm sure it probably would have been thrown out anyway but i still i don't know i look back on that and i'm like yeah it was a little bit weird but you know like when you consider the 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 exact situation that led up to that um you, you know like we're at a punk bar right we're at a punk bar so i i thought he was at least 18 maybe at least 21 because i forget what the liquor laws in virginia are like for like concert venues and it wasn't an all ages show either so um <laughs> and i know it wasn't an all ages show because it was my birthday <laughs> so uh, <laughs> and i was at that bar all the time they did sometime have all ages shows earlier in the day so anyway that's how i know that and so like anyway so like i i went over this in um in, a, in one of my streams back in January. Um, so like I would be on the downtown mall with a bunch of other, you know, like gutter punk kids and like, you know, like the overlap of, of goths and gutter punks in Virginia at that time, um, especially like in Charlottesville and Richmond at that time. And, you know, it's so like I ran into Chris Chan like a couple of times. The first time um, I've said the story on Reddit a bunch of times, but like I was playing a plate of bar food with some friends in the, in the outside dining that summer. And Chris Chan and Barb come by and Chris is very excited because like, I don't know, I kind of like, I know Chris, especially way back then, uh, was very averse to, um, guys, but I think Chris made an exception for some of the, some of the punks I hung out with because of the colorful hair. Like, you know, it's like almost like meeting an anime character in, in a sense. And Chris has some very childish idea, like still to this day, has some very childish ideas about the world. So um, it wouldn't be too far fetched to think like that's what what Chris was thinking, like why it's OK to like, you know, talk to these guys. Right. So, yeah, like we're, we're having we're splitting a plate of like chili fries or something just for the sake of argument. Um, sometimes we would split a big giant burrito from the bar, but I, I don't know. Let's just say chili fries for the sake of, you know, for the sake of the story. Um, Chris is really excited, um, to show off. Cause like a couple of the gutter punks I would hang out with, 
uh, knew Chris Chan, weren't exactly friends with Chris Chan, but knew Chris Chan and knew that they could like, you know, like get those little like, um, this is a jar from, um, from a thing of yogurt, but you know, like those little, um, I guess people are calling them gachapon now or, um, the little capsule machines, right. That would like dispense like little trinket toys or like cheap ass stickers. And the ones that you like put the quarters on the flat thing is stick it in and then you pull it out and a sticker comes out with that thing. So like whenever they would get like certain Pokemon related stuff out of those machines for like, you know, a quarter to 75 cents each, because this was 20 years ago. And they would sell them to Chris at like exorbitant prices, like between a dollar and $5 each. So like, like they would basically rob Chris blind and Chris would gladly you know, would, would like gladly comply with being robbed blind by, you know, by, by the guys with the blue hair, you know, offering to sell like Pokemon and Sonic the Hedgehog shit, right? And Chris was really excited to come, you know, like, you know, talk to the guys I was sharing the chili fries with because Chris had made a fanny pack out of Legos. I wish I had pictures of this because this is like some, some, some Chris Chan lost lore. Um, this goddamn fanny pack made of Legos. I, I really do wish I had pictures of this. It was just, it, it was as stupid as it sounds, right? So that's how I knew about Chris Chan. Um, and like, you know, obviously like it didn't end with just that, but that's how I knew about Chris Chan long before. But anyway, like if you're, if, if you're a Kiwi farmer seeking to reform, please like, you know, and, and you're looking at this, at this whole situation. And like I said, you find it deep down in, in, in the cockles of your heart to reform, like just go hashtag Zico of the poppy cule as like, you know, you know, just to like signal to me that like, Hey, I think you're pretty cool. Um, I, you know, you're, I don't know, you're, you're, you're kind of stupid sometimes, but you know, it, it's the internet who isn't right. Um, but anyway, um, like if you think it's really, it's, it's really shitty, what um poppy and the poppy cool have been trying to subject me to uh like i said just like just like signal z hashtag zico of the poppy cool because like i said not enough people have taken notice of the fact that with all of these dumped logs in the in the google docs they got a singular hotel room ergo Zeno was in the Sneeko chair, and I hate myself that I know what the Sneeko chair is, but at the same time, it's also really funny that, like, there are, you know, circles of the internet that know what that means and <laughs> and think it's just as funny, but, um, yeah, so, like, let's see, I, I did want to, like, um, I, I heard about the thing with, um, uh, the Luxander stream bit, so, like, um, so like Alexander said that there was a timestamp thing here and, um, um, I mean, I do want to watch the whole edited segment, but yeah, like there's the, or, you know, like, I don't know if I'm, if I'm able to view the whole thing, um, on my own time, I don't want to go over the whole thing, but, oh yeah, four and 42. Okay. Well, here we are, ready to talk about some happening for a long time now, uh, about six months at least. Okay, it looks like the vol has working. been like ongoing more news coming out about this particular. We've done coverage of topics like this before. <laughs> the We've Nigel chair. About, like Sophie from Mars. My cat is so weird. And honestly, I think the weirdest thing about like the Xena and Poppy stuff and like me covering it is how long it has taken me to get around to covering it because frankly material so far that I easily have done independent oh here's a new thing here's a new development drama streams I could have done this like six different times um so today we're kind of taking everything that's been happening over the last six months and maybe even a little bit before that and trying to sort of put it all together, visualize it. We're not going into full reading every single part of the transcript kind of detail. There are other drama channels who've been talking about this, and 
a lot of these screenshots and this documentation is available publicly anyway. So the document that I'm going to be reading from primarily is going to be available public. Um, and some of you have maybe even seen some of the other Google Docs dropping, um, showing screenshots, evidencing <sighs> questionable behavior at the minimum. I don't want to feel much, but um, yeah, it's been tricky for sure. And there's been um, a lot of hurt feelings and a, a lot of people who are trying to still be supportive of Zena and Poppy um, and you know, gradually that knock out, which happens sometimes. There's some, some content warnings. There's going to be discussion of like, different, like, financial abiding and a discussion of, like, sexual assault and rape, sexual harassment. All kinds of stuff. We're going to be Maybe. Oh, look at him. He's my nacho. Hey, baby boy. Hello, my love. Hi. <laughs> look at it, Phoebe. You're being a brat. You're being a brat, little girl. Oh, Phoebe. Don't be annoying. Thank you. Oh. You okay, honey? Oh my gosh. Oh gosh, Kat, why did you do that? Okay. Okay. She just she just got on. She stepped on the on the um uh little uh finger track pad there. Hi. Hello, I love you too. I did not think Nigel would make an appearance. Oh, hey hey. Okay. Baby, I know, I know, I know. Hey, oh, what? Did you just want to sit there and stare at me and now Phoebe ruined it for you? He is such a weird little guy. Hello, Miss Phoebe. Hi, I love you too. Oh, <laughs> Josh says the Nigel chair. Oh, I think he knew he was being talked about. I think he knew he was being talked about. He sensed it. Hi. You keep your names. Wait a minute. Just one more. Just one more. There we go. I know. 
I know, I know. Hi. Yes, I love you too. She's so good about getting her nails clipped. Unlike Nigel, who likes to fight me. Even though he knows he's going to get his little tube of chicken mousse afterward. I mean, I would go get Phoebe a chicken mousse right now, but they're going to be having super in a little under an hour or so. I don't want to spoil her dinner. Right? Hello. I know. Oh, we knew they're going to continue with the inappropriate behaviors because Poppy is a narcissist. Uh, therefore, she believes she never does anything wrong. And she and even if she does do something wrong, she is totally justified in doing it. And if you do not believe you, she is justified in doing it, then you are the enemy. We know Poppy's going to continue this because, you know, that's why she doesn't seek out DBT for her borderline symptoms. Because um, as HD Tutor puts it, um, there are two kinds of people who are diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. Uh, the first type um, are those who are um, receptive, at the very least, in concept to the idea of um, seeking uh, some sort of treatment, um, usually DBT or CBT, um, cognitive or dialectical behavior of behavior therapies, um, which are also the most effective therapies for treating PTSD and CPTSD. Hmm, funny that. And uh, HD Tutor says that, you know, those who are receptive to therapies, those who find these therapies, you know, to be, you know, beneficial that, you know, will relieve their borderline symptoms. Uh, these are people who are um, almost certainly misdiagnosed um, CPTSD cases, as was my case. Um, I was given a borderline diagnosis over 20 years ago when I was still, it was used to um, deny me treatment after all this was time when the idea of treating personality disorders i mean yeah it's still considered now that like medications you know don't do really anything for you know personality disorders as a whole but you know like the idea of treating personality disorders at all like over 20 years ago when a former therapist decided to saddle me with a bpd thing um it was just like no you're you're all but a lost cause as long as you're not breaking any laws you know what's the point in treating a personality disorder it's it's something deep ingrained in you you can't fix it right uh so yeah like this was used to deny and of course this was also um this is also um almost certainly spearheaded by the fact that my father uh managed to convince that therapist that um yeah, basically convinced that therapist that all of my allegations of um, of abuse, which at least, you know, in my case, you know, it was only um, emotional and psychological abuse that I was being subjected to. Uh, well, mainly emotional and psychological abuse. There was like, you know, just like, the, like my father and I would get into, phys you know, physical fist fights at times. And that's one of the reasons that I spent summers with my uh, my eldest half-sister, the one from my mom's side, in England uh, <laughs> for a time um, during the summers while I was in high school because, you know, my, my stepmother, uh, you know, literally said that 
you know, this, this is probably the better idea because um, she doesn't want my father and I to kill each other, you know, and if she can get like three months where she knows that we are not going to kill each other, all the better, right? But anyway, you know, like the whole BPD thing was being used to, um, it, in fact, like it was, it, it, it was, um, you know, a, uh, a, 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 a thing that, that came about because my dad was able to convince my therapist at the time. Remember, I was still a teenager at the time. I was still in high school. This was well over 20 years ago. Um, that, um, that somehow I was a manipulative liar and don't believe a thing I say about any of these allegations of, you know, of, of even, you know, of, of even like, physical abuse, you know, though that's not physical abuse. That's, that's my dad fighting back. Like, like, no, you're, you're, you're the adult. You're, you know, ran it. Like he, he was five foot four and a half. So like, you know, less than six inches taller than me, but he was still taller than me. Um, he was still the adult. He was still like physically stronger than me. Like, like, no, no, I, I, I was, I, I was, literally an adolescent. He he was the parent. He was, you know, like in his fifties, he, he knew better. He knew better and he knew it was bullshit. And, um, and yeah, I, just the fact that he apologized after I went no contact for four years from the age of 17 to 21. Um, and he apologized and, um, he died of a relatively random brain aneurysm. Granted, he had a head injury in 1990. And he, um, yeah, uh, after that, like he would suffer mini strokes that he was on blood thinners on to, um, to, uh, you know, to, to, um, to, to reduce the, um, rate of mini strokes. So of course, like a brain aneurysm, it, it's, it's not unexpected for somebody in that situation, but it's just like, it was relatively sudden, you know, like, it's not like my dad, you know, like knew he was like having congestive heart failure or something or cancer or something. And this is him like apologizing, you know, trying to make peace with God before, you know, b b before he dies because he knows he's dying. Like, no, this was, this was a gen, this was coming from a genuine place because like I said, it was like, you know, he, he was, as far as everybody else could tell, healthy. And then a few months later, he, uh, he, he had a brain aneurysm while, um, while, uh, well, while taking the, uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the, the scrap metal he'd collect to the, to the, to the junkyard. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I was, um, so yeah, like I'm, um, how did I get going on this? Anyway, like HG Tutor. Uh, says that like you know there's there's the two types of borderline personality disorder. Um, the the first type that I just described it's like people with um, misdiagnosed PTSD, and when you offer them treatment, which is coincidentally the same, you know, established most effective treatment for CPTSD these people improve. And then he says, then HD Tutor says that there's a second type of person who gets, you know, the, um, the, the diagnosis of borderline personality disorder. And these are the narcissists and they tend to be the women who are narcissists. And um, a part of that is because BPD is a, a an incredibly, um, gendered diagnosis. Um, and one thing that, and HD tutor admits that, and uh, one thing he doesn't though, uh, one thing he doesn't touch on is that PTSD is also an incredibly gendered, it, it at least has a history of being an incredibly gendered diagnosis, you know, like overwhelmingly given to men. Right. So, um, so, so yeah, like the, the concept of borderline personality disorder it's been used to just like basically like write off women and AFAB persons as, you know, just, yeah, they're just crazy. I don't know why this is, you know, like, oh no, there's, you know, can't be any kind of like, you know, trauma disorder related to a terrible upbringing and or, you know, marital life. 
they're just crazy. <laughs> right? Like that's, there, there's a long history of BPD being used in that way. Right? So I, I am not a fan of BPD just as a whole. And, you know, being an AFAB, you know, trans man who's also like a flaming femboy, you know, I, um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not a fan. And yeah, I, uh, just because like I said, like when I switched, you know, when I had a different therapist and this was like some years later who, um, you know, who was willing to listen to my traumatic, um, um, past with, uh, with, with, with my upbringing and, you know, and of course this has since been complicated by a number of exes. Um, he, he was all like, you know, this sounds like CPTSD to me. And when we started treating it as a case of CPTSD, I began improving. Um, now I didn't finish the, um, the, the DBT, you know, thing um that i um um was uh doing at that time this was years years back but um you know and um i've uh i've been at least kind of interested in maybe restarting you know something like that just because um uh 2020 really like did a number on my mental health and um like like mentally and like now like as far as like living situation like i'm in a much you know better more stable position right now um that is something i feel like i am in a stable enough position to try again right but again like i said like this is the same treatment like the most effective bpd treatment and the proven most effective cptsd treatment it's the same thing like it's the same thing it's the same um it's the same course of dbt therapies so like like uh so yeah like when when poppy was going on in january about how like oh no bpd and cptsd are two completely different things and saying oh well bpd and npd are nothing alike well first off no um bpd and npd are both cluster b personality disorders that means they do share a significant amount of commonality. So that's a lie. Um, and when she says that CPTSD and BPD are nothing alike, like, no, because the most effective treatment for both are the same thing. So again, this is like Poppy talking out of her ass because, you know, she wants to wave this flag of, you know, authority and like, oh, look at me. I'm a professional. Therefore, you must trust everything I say without question or you're just, you're, you're, you're just wrong. You're just part of this harassment campaign against me. I'm like, no, no, you're the only one campaigning to harass other people, hon. Um, oh gosh, I went off on a tangent. We were listening to Alexander for a bit and I think he was going on about BPD stuff. That's what it got me going on this for a bit. Let me go back a little bit. Morning stuff about the, and um, its own traumatic, you know, childhood. So, okay. That's how I got going on BPD stuff. Oh my gosh. Oh dear. Okay. I got about another like half hour, 45 minutes before the cats will be up my ass for dinner. So.
Oh wait, I saw this live. <laughs> I'm <laughs> okay. Yeah, now now I remember. I saw this live. You know what? Let's uh, let's let let's uh, ah, let's do something. I uh, yeah. You know what? I'm gonna put that off until tomorrow night. Um 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 um. Okay, so I saw this from Luxander live. Something about the way the, the the way that Luxander put things just a minute there. It's like it's like, oh wait, I did see this. Because it sounded a little bit familiar for a moment there. Okay, let's see. Where was I going on? All right. Um, let's see. Okay. So let's see. More Twitter stuff. Okay. Okay, here's what I started. Here's what I was going on about like a couple hours ago. Um, how uh yeah. Oh, that's what I started looking up gay fetch stuff for. All right, yeah, yeah, because um, I was looking up something. I was trying to find something that gay fetch had said about um, 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 a um, a screen cap that he took of um of Sage saying, "Oh, well, Rowan can still use PayPal and Cash App." <laughs> you know, we're not trying to take away his entire in means of getting donations to stay in the extended stay America after, you know, some subhuman set his tent on fire. And, you know, luckily he uh, had the foresight to keep his, you know, two surviving cats in a stroller with him all day when he's out of the tent after somebody kept letting the cats out while I was away all summer and, or, you know, not all summer, just like while I was out during the day and, you know, somebody kept letting the cats out and Murnau got poisoned and and somebody stole Mr. Midnight's ashes and but uh but yeah, you know, gay fish going, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, like Murnau was such a sweet little cat too. All right, Fish says, uh, now I may be a simple country lawyer. That's, uh, yeah. Targeting his PayPal, of all things, sounds like, uh, it sounds to me like she actually did want to completely destroy his ability to, you know, make money. A homeless man living week to week in a motel waiting for Section 8. Murder him, Sage. Because, yeah, like, this was, this was the middle of January after my tent had been set on fire, and... That uh, that that Kofi um goal was up at the uh, uh, that was pinned to the top of my Twitter up until just like either last night or t early this morning. I decided to take I decided to um replace the Kofi goal. You know, I, I decided to make it the new co. I decided to like pin the the current Kofi goal because that one is like um is like I I there is stuff that I need to replace because like. I'm still going on like the uh on like the the um the, the six pack of of uh of uh of jockeys that I got after the fire because I lost so many of my clothes including most of my including most of my skivvies. If I still have any if I still have any jockeys um left, you know, that were in storage. Um, I haven't found the, uh, I haven't found the box or bag that those are in yet. Um, I'm still unpacking because I need new bookshelves and I might need new cat furniture. Well, I knew cat tree anyway. Um, there's a whole lot of other stuff that I need to, uh, to get and replace too. Um, just, a. Uh, Oh, sorry about just suddenly my my mood taking a taking a nosedive there. I just you know talking about the BPD stuff that I put up with late in my adolescence and and stuff and then like switching back to this and remembering what got me um, wanting to search Gay Fesh's Twitter a couple hours ago the first time. Um, remembered for now, and 
which was before the fire, but, you know, in a weird way, at least, um, at least he didn't go for nothing because after that I, I, I got the, I got the stroller for the cat, for the other two cats so that I could have them with me whenever I was out of the tent, just because I couldn't trust other people not to, you know, let them out, which would endanger them. Like Nigel and Phoebe are both 11 years old too. You know, they're both 11 years old as well, you know, so like, and, and Murnau was only six. All right. As a footnote, to date this screenshot, since it was taken the day of, so it doesn't have it, uh, so it doesn't display the date, Sage linked to, Sage linked, uh, Sage linked one of her own tweets in it, also saying it was posted that day. So all I have to do is type in that Earl and get, and I get January 28th. So, um, ba -ba -ba -ba, screen of sages, um, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, uh, really cool watching on the mountaintop, uh, mixed dizzy, uh, defend the circle of people that led to that led me to my attempt. I remember when that happened and like, no, like Sage has been gaslighted by Poppy and Xena since that attempt. Cause I, I remember that. I remember that like, like I was watching both of them. Uh, I was watching both, both Sage's and, and uh, Xena and Poppy's channel. Sage has definitely been gaslighted by the, by the both of them since that attempt into you know, b believing it was not Poppy who fanned the flames that led to that. It was Poppy who fanned the flames that led to that. And lots of screens have dropped since that not only, you know, that not like, not just Twitter screens that I remember seeing, but behind the scenes of screens, you know, that, um, that, uh, that, that I was not privy to, but you know, beforehand, but that uh, definitely support that, yes, Poppy basically gaslighted Sage into, you know, not only believing it was somehow other people that, you know, um, drove her to that attempt, but that, uh, you know, but also to completely forget that Poppy was the main one fanning the flames of that attempt. And since that attempt, like, Sage has been, you know, especially this last couple of months has been, it's been at an especially rapid pace, but Sage has, since that attempt, Sage has been gradually morphing into Poppy's little mini me, you know, like, and honestly, I can't tell if this is at, Poppy's nudging and encouragement, or if it's Sage just trying to get Poppy's attention, you know, and be acknowledged as, you know, something more than like a third, you know, that's just like kept around to like feed Poppy's ego. Like, I, I honestly can't tell if this is like all like, you know, pop, if this is, if this morphing of Sage into Poppy's own little mini me is just like, you know, I, I can't tell if it's, you know, like at Poppy's, you know, encouragement or if it's Sage just desperately trying to get Poppy's attention and, you know, and, and get some kind of approval, like more regularly than previously. But, you know, it, it like that that is not a healthy relationship at all you you, you don't you, you know healthy relationships do not lead to one person trying to become another person in the relationship you know like the other person in the relationship like that 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 is not a hallmark of happy of you know healthy relationships 
Okay, Gayfesh continues. Sorry, Poppy, but I have receipts. Uh, let's see. Please refer to previous posts explaining or if I had deception and don't ever sleep with these people. They do not understand these. Oh, gosh. Okay, so this is like somebody. Um, K-O-T-D art. What the hell is K-O-T? I remember K-O-D-T as Knights of the Dinner Table, which is like an old um, D&D um, comic strip, like about D&D players. Comic strip, comic book. It was a bit of both. Um, anyway, trying to kick a homeless man out of a hotel in the middle of Midwest winter. Not attempted murder. Getting rejected by alcohol after a hookup. This is rare. Oh, gosh. No, Zena, you're not. Poppy, you're the one who does not understand what consent means. If you understood what consent means, then you would have accepted when no flake had multiple times, like, no, I do not want to continue this relationship. This is bad for my mental health. This is, this is not good. I am not happy with this anymore. Like, you know, but, but no, no, Poppy and Zena badgered Noah for hours, you know, over eight hours. Like they spent a work day at least, if not longer, badgering and needling into Noah, just like breaking down her resolve until she just finally caved in. They dedicated the span of a work day an eight hour, you know, like the equivalent of an eight hour day at, at you know, an eight hour shift at, at, on the job to, you know, pressuring no flake back into the relationship so that Poppy and Xena could drive out of state to, to no flake city so that Poppy could, could get, could get laid and Zena could sit in the Sneeko chair. They only got one hotel room. Zena was in the Sneeko chair. I don't know if people give that enough attention. But anyway. Um, uh, you know, for a supposed leftist, she should know better than to call the cops on someone homeless. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I get, Yeah, I guess they attempted to call the cops to show up at the hotel I was at, but like th they didn't know which hotel I was at. And anyway, it like, th there was, there was no reason to send the cops there because I literally didn't do anything that might have broken a law or even towed a line towards breaking a law. What did I do? I pulled up city to city driving directions. So like, nobody's house or anything like that. But, uh, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> All right. Oh, right, right. I was gonna, uh, you know, let's, uh, okay. So yeah, I goofed off so long as, um, so yeah, let's see. I saw the, I saw Alexander, um, Strimb, when that was live a couple days ago, and um, I don't remember what that, what the hell did Alexander, um, um, what did Alexander, um, timestamp that for? Oh gosh. Kiddies. This is like the main reason I'm st I'm, I'm still on Twitter, right? Is like I, I just like like most of my timeline is cute animals and like there just aren't quite as many cute animal accounts on um on Blue Sky just yet for me to completely just like go back to barely acknowledging that I have a Twitter account. 
Uh, bah, 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 bah. All right. Where was I going with this? Baby. Okay. I think there was a. This me. me. Better be me. All right. All right. Tis me. All right, so there we go. Um, yeah, like, the reason I need new bookshelves is because when I was moving all my crap in a storage uh, a year and a half ago, whatever, um, all, uh, all of my old press board bookshelves just, like, they died. My press board bookshelves died because, you know, that's what press board bookshelves do. Oh. Oh, that's right. I wanted to, uh, but, uh, but this is something that I went on, that I went off on, went off about on Twitter today, earlier today was, um, that, uh, the, uh, I, I, I'm kind of entertained. I'm, I'm like vaguely entertained by the fact that like, like the, the whole, like the whole poppy cool and you know, and the, uh, and the poppy cult are, uh, really love to just, like, completely ignore the, like, they will, they will go on and on about how, like, oh, you're only, you're, you're, you're only, like, going after poppy because, because people don't like it when, it, when, it, when a, when a trans woman asserts herself, and I'm like, no, this has nothing to do with her being trans, this has everything to do with her being a fucking creep, and, you know, and, and just like outright abusive towards people. And, um, but, uh, yeah, like the cultists keep repeating that bullshit claim over and over, but never provide any proof. That's what I was allegedly doing, which, you know, as we see here, Hey, Hey, so you seem to be missing context. That man was actively on a stream trying to find their house. No, I wasn't. And track them down in person. No, I wasn't. Like we literally met in person just by sheer coincidence because we live in the same area. Because, like, we happened to be at the same nightclub on the same night because we live in the same general area. Where Poppy lives is, like, just over the county line of, you know, from, from uh, I'm in Washtenaw County, she's in Livingston County. She is, like, just about over the county line of, of Livingston County relative to Washtenaw County. Now, like, as I displayed with my wonderful visual aids earlier like if livingston county is right here and washington county is right here ann arbor is hereabouts ypsilanti where i'm at is hereabouts um and where poppy's at in livingston county is up hereabouts where my middle finger is doing a little dance um so it's like it's not incredibly close but it's like like I like I showed on on the map quest city to city directions it it's a 15 to 30 minute drive depending on the traffic satellites which I have said repeatedly which is in a tweet that's screen capped in one of the in one of the documents that dropped earlier this week that's all I did and yeah in retrospect pulling up the 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 map quest city to city you know bing maps whatever you know city to city driving directions and like i said it's city to city um in one of the i think it's one of the um uh, bah, 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 bah. you know what i'm gonna switch to the dock real quick because i know it's in one of these um uh, i'm uh i don't know i'm still kind of like feeling um murnau when I was passing, he was just such a sweet little cat, but, uh, but I'm also like trying to be entertaining. Right. All right. Are you ADHAN? It's me. Um, 
Emma. I also can't find this stream that I that I saw a clip from from Sage earlier because um, I did I, I went on in one of my Twitter replies to somebody that I'm a, or maybe it was a QT QRT whatever um, about how at this point I'm just like I'm just like more surprised by like like obviously I'm not surprised by any of their bullshit lies but I'm surprised by the fact that Sage actually pronounced my my forename correctly and depending on when that stream of hers aired if it was before the document dropped then I'm even more impressed um but uh cuz uh um um Okay, this looks like a. Uh, all right, yeah, this is the this is the um. The screen from the uh, um the, Annie Annie shit. I'm forgetting her surname. Uh, Annie says uh, um. Same same one who says who said uh, who, that said Poppy doesn't have BPD. Um, I, I believe Poppy's got that diagnosis. But as I've said many times in this stream and previous streams that um, I just find the whole concept of BPD as just a way to um, dismiss the, uh, the, the symptoms of CPTSD in women and AFAB persons and, um, and also kind of a way to downplay narcissistic personality disorder in women and AFAB persons. So it's like, yes, I acknowledge that the diagnosis exists. Yes, I acknowledge that Poppy has this diagnosis. Um, but to be more precise, I just find the whole notion of BPD existing as a wholly unique phenomenon that is, you know, that that is significantly different from either um, CPTSD or NPD to be highly suspect. So, you know, like, no, I never, I technically never said Poppy does not have, I might have very briefly, but like due to like character limit on Twitter or something, but like I, but uh, but yeah, I I typically refer to HG Tudor's um video, uh, the borderline is not what you think, where he, um, he goes into a detailed enough explanation of um, of why BPD is, you know, it is um, it is not significantly different enough from either NPD or the, uh, you know, or, or the cases that are misdiagnosed CPTSD. And I do find validity in that hypothesis. And as I said in last night's stream, it is not an uncommon hypothesis amongst even mental health professionals, which HD Tutor is not. But the first time I heard of this hypothesis was from mental health professionals. Um, well over 15 years ago. So it is not an uncommon hypothesis either. Anyway, um, this is referring to when uh, Rowan saw the city listed on Poppy's GoFundMe, saw that it was close to him, and looked it up on Google Maps to see how far it was from him. That's it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this is, you know, screen cap of my of my tweet saying you know she poppy also lives between 15 and 35 minutes from me according to her latest public gofundme and depending on the reports from bing maps traffic satellites so again like we're talking about twitter character limits this is me condensing the idea of you know depending on how heavy the traffic is you know it can be a 15 minute drive or a 35 minute drive from Ann Arbor, which was where I was, you know, the day I made that tweet, um, you know, I was in a extended stay American, actually, they're both in Ann Arbor, but, you know, so I'm in Ann Arbor, 
and I see that Hamburg Township, Michigan, is um, you know, and there were like a couple times, and the reason that I've come, you know, that, that I narrowed it down to like that that I give a span of fifteen to thirty five minutes is because um, I did look at a on a couple of different days at distinctly different times, so like when it's very low traffic, it can be you know it can be as quick as a fifteen to twenty minute drive, you know, depending on how you drive, I suppose, and the you know the exact freeways you take and all that. To be fair, though, I used to know somebody who swore up and down that it's only a 90 minute drive from Las Vegas to Los Angeles. When it's like when like people who drive reasonably, it's more like a two and a half to three hour drive. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, like, um, but uh, but like when I was checking the uh, when I was checking the drive time again, city, to one city to another city during like. A rush hour period perhaps like on maybe that was even like no wait this was january so it wouldn't have been a umich game day or would it have been a umich game day i don't know but like whatever like depending you know it was probably during a rush hour period um or something it was closer to like a 35 minute drive from ann arbor michigan to hamburg township michigan that's all that's all that's all it was i i just looked up drive times from one city to another city. I never looked for anybody's home. This this has been, you know, again, like we see in the doc here. This this is all I said. This is literally all I said. Um, let's see. Here's a part of his stream where he addresses this allegation. Really? We got its timestamp stream? Ah, sweet from the past. Maybe. Uh oh hey, we do have time stamped from my stream. I'm gonna look at this a bit more more in depth on like like if not tomorrow, maybe Sunday. We can make it an Easter Oh hey, there's ah oh, that that coffee cups. And do you have literally nothing? I think it said nothing better to do than something and cyber stalking it on live stream. Oh my gosh! Like as we see, Sage Lex is here being like hyperbolic at best. A goddamn Riri at worst, you know, like is just saying stuff that she clearly has, like, ma you know, making claims she clearly has, like, no proof to back up, but is, like, just, you know, repeating what Poppy told her to say. Um, and a as, as we saw, like, on the stream, little recap, uh, that it's not cyber stalking to look up driving directions from one city to another. Like th that's that's not cyber stalking to go to a person's own GoFundMe page or as um 
as uh, as I showed earlier, um, since you know it's no longer on the GoFundMe, uh, and of course I gotta pause this shit. Please stop. God damn it. Pause. Don't you dare play again. So yeah, um, Zena and Jess video. Trans girl therapist with Zena and Jess. Remember it was called that. When remember when the remember when the channel was called that. But uh, but then like I guess Poppy's employer, you know, thought like, hey, like, you know, you might give people the wrong impression by branding yourself as trans girl therapist. Like, you're you're not these you're not your audience's therapist. Like, you might want to adjust things a little bit. And you know, so like that's that's when she started going by Poppy was like somewhere around that time, you know, like when, when the rebrand to Xena and Poppy Wholesome Degenerates happened, or, you know, first it was Xena and Poppy, um, and then it was Xena and Poppy Wholesome Degenerates. So, yeah, like early on, I remember, it was once called Trans Girl Therapist with Xena and Jess. All right, I need your help, Jessica's go fund me. But, uh, but yeah, like since no longer on, uh, on Poppy, or should I say... Her friend and editor Penelope's go. F I've taken a screen cap of this. We know what you do. We, we we know what all what all these goofy names you go by are. Um, you, you know you, you um, so uh so yeah like. Here we go, here we go. Oh my gosh, what is this? Do we have to zoom in again? My diabolical methods of of cyber stalking people with literally like just like having a fair memory for shit I actually read and the faces of people I meet IRL and thus you know I I can just like put two and two together and be like oh hey yeah that's not too far from me oh yeah I did meet that person like at the club one day that is not under any definition cyber stuff But you know, like, um, in spite of all his, um, what's her face, um, Poppy, who does not want her audience to do any critical thinking, because if they did do critical thinking, it would be obvious to them that you know nothing they've said about me and you know is true, and then that would like lead them to question, oh, well. What about the things Poppy said about other people? If these bizarre allegations against Ruan are untrue, then maybe the allegations Poppy has made against other people aren't as true either. Huh. Ah. Ah. Zane and Poppy's foundation fup around and find out arc. We have a new post on on the Foundation Discord asking everyone to report Ruan's streams, channel, P Patreon, and Ko-Fi for attempted doxing and trying to find us live on stream. Again, as we saw um, when uh, when when Sage showed her little re, -re self up in you know my stream. What the. Oh, there we go. Me of cyber stalking on live stream, like n no. What I live stream was under no definitions of, you know, legal or colloquial, of what cyber stalking would entail. All I did was look up, you know, online satellite map driving directions from one city to another based on information that you know that uh that, that poppy had once put on her gofundme but you know she's since changed it to lansing like her original hometown and but you know that info is still visible on older videos on the xena and poppy show so that is is uh you know, that has, that makes the unusual there like a bump on a log knitting going, yup, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, 
that that distinct way Zena will go mm-hmm just just like I don't know that 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 like kind of trips my autism radar for a second and you know I think Zena might actually be ADHD but um you know like they'll ever admit it uh because uh it it's it's I don't know I mean that's just my suspicion just based on you know like a weird little vocal tick that reminds me of a number of um, autistic folk I've known. Um, you know, I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just thinking like, you know, you, you, you might want to be evaluated for this, but, you know, like like they'll listen to reason on anything that's, you know, coming from outside the poppy cule. Uh, let's see. Um, I think I went over this the other day, but... uh. But yeah, like, like uh, again, I, I I'm not completely. I don't know. I don't think I've said anything especially objectionable about you know um DID. Um, just like I acknowledge that it's a very controversial diagnosis. I um I explained earlier this evening that you know like when you look at things like the Shirley Mason case, where like this was a case of the uh, of the doctor you know, had basically gaslighted the patient into thinking she had multiple personalities because it was like 1970 and that's what they called it then. Um, um, Dr. Uh, Cornelia Wilbur also was obsessed with an earlier book, uh, The Three Faces of Eve, and she wanted to, you know, become just as, if not more famous than uh, the doctors who uh, put together this book. Um, which is um like I said, it's uh it's it's written as like um part novelization, but uh part yeah, two or three times the patient was found by her. Yeah, so it's like it's it's written more as a classic case study, um, with like some novelization sort of aspects to it. But uh yeah, uh Dr. Corbett H. Thigpen, MD, and Dr. Hervey M. Cleckley, MD. Uh, they wrote The Three Faces of Eve in 1957. This is a vintage uh, first printing of the uh, paper, uh, first printing of the first paperback edition from 1961. Um, but it's obviously seen many better days. So, um, so yeah, I got to handle it with care. But, um, so yeah, like that's like I said, 1961 first run printing of the first paperback edition of a 1957 novel that um, became a 1959 film, I believe. Um, again, based on the novel as I the novelized aspects of this a little, like you know, they turn it into like a more of um, you know more of like a narrative story for the film. Um, but yeah, um, Academy Award um, for uh, Best Actress by Joanne Woodward. It's a pretty good little film. Um, and um, and that case is a lot less controversial. The um, the woman it's based on had, had um after after Sybil, the Shirley Mason case, after that, you know, book came out, and then, you know, like a couple years later, the TV movie starring Sally Field. Uh, like I said, the um oh crap, I'm brain farting on her name, and I looked it up earlier. I think I looked it up on the phone. I'm you know. Fuck it. Well, whatever. You'll you'll look up Three Faces of Eve on Wikipedia. You'll you'll, um, you'll find her name. But yeah, like she did her own book called I Am Eve that she published in 1977 to significantly less fanfare than the Sybil book received. But um, but yeah, the Shirley Mason case, incredibly controversial case on so many levels. Um, Cornelia Wilbur like was like basically. Shirley Mason became so emotionally dependent on uh, Cornelia Wilbur that, like, even after her death, even after Wilbur's death, and Mason lived like another like fifteen or so years after that, like, she would she would give conflicting stories um, on how the case even you know, like even happened, but it had been established by the um, by the writer of the novelization. Uh, Sybil, that writer did say that like Cornelia Wilbur hired her to write the book 
before she even had a case. So that that just puts a lot of things into perspective there. Like Cornelia Wilbur was almost certainly a narcissist herself who, who just outright wanted to become just as if not more famous than the, you know, arguably more ethical doctors on the Three Faces of Eve case. Um, so, um, so, uh, so yeah, like, like I said, DID is a highly controversial diagnosis, even within the mental health field. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, yeah. In, uh, you know, one of which being that one of the most famous cases of it, quote unquote, is also an incredibly controversial case. And, um, and the, the consistent parts of Shirley Mason's, um, testimonies about, um, uh, Dr. Wilbur after, uh, Dr. Wilbur's own death. Um, you know, cause like I said, she does have some inconsistencies, like, you know, like she seems to contradict herself, like depending on the interview or whatever, but the consistent parts do seem to suggest that she was gaslighted into believing that she had multiple personalities. Um, that, um, you know, it does seem like a case of, you know, CPSD stemming from childhood abuse and, you know, perhaps with, um, you know, dissociative amnesia is not especially uncommon with PTSD and CPTSD cases. Um, that doesn't necessarily make it a case of DID. Um, cause, um, um, there are, um, last night's stream, I played a couple of chapters from, um, uh, neurotransmissions, um, two words, neurotransmissions. Um, he has a video from a couple months back on DID that is actually pretty good. And he comes down on a very sympathetic side. And like, when you look at, um, neurological scans of people with a DID diagnosis, um, when they are in a, uh, when, when they are in an alter fronted state, um, you know, there is something going on neurologically in the brain. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, I don't see what the hell is like so controversial, but like the things that I say about it, like, but, um, I also, you know, acknowledge that, yeah, there, there are, um, some people who, you know, factitiously portray themselves with it there's a very notable tiktoker who did that and then was outed and very embarrassed and i'm just like why are people surprised at this because like she said in her tiktok profile that you know she, she was an aspiring actress i'm like really um this surprised people like this shocked people to you know but whatever um and, uh, you know, but just because I acknowledge that there are some people who do fake it, um, first off, like, I don't think that a lot of people who quote unquote fake it are necessary. Like there's, there's a lot of people who like, don't really understand, um, the, um, you, you know, like the, the very simplified definitions of things that they're given. And so like might mistakenly think that this is what's going on, but they didn't get the whole picture of things or, you know, they are looking at, you know, definitions from the DSM, but not completely understanding the, um, um, the medical jargon, uh, definitions of these things, right. That like, that like, you know, that like in a different context, medical terminology that, you know, uses some of the same words as, you know, plain folk English, right? Like in the context of medical jargon, these words can mean something just different enough that like you know, the concept of like self-diagnoses, you know, can only go so far, right? 
so it's like, I think there are some people who are mistaken because they don't understand the medical jargon in the DSM. Um, I think there are some people who are mistaken because, you know, like when given a more thorough layman's definition, you know, are just, and then, you know, like, yeah, there are going to be like teenagers just like dicking around and, and stuff. But then there are also cases of, like I said, like when you look at neuroscans, there are indeed at least a significant enough number of people with a DID diagnosis who show that something is going on during an alter fronted state that, you know, that, that, that there is something significant going on there. Like, like there are people who are definitely not faking, right? Granted, you know, um, they have the ability to access like, um, the proper mental health care to get the diagnosis and then, you know, go through the prop, you know, go through the, you know, diagnostic stuff or, you know, um, you know, or even if they, you know, just like sign up for a study on DID, but, you know, you have to have a diagnosis before you can sign up for these studies. Right. So it's like, um, but, uh, but yeah, like something is going on, um, whether or not it should be considered its own separate thing, you know, or a subtype of CPTSD. I don't know. I don't see what's so controversial about saying like, you know, it's probably a subtype of CPTSD because when you look at cases of DID, they all seem to share a, um, uh, an experience of like extreme childhood trauma of, some sort, right? So considering a subtype of CPTSD, I don't see what's so controversial about that. Um, obviously, there are going to be people who will argue about anything, you know, and just whatever. Okay. But, um, but you know, and I would like to see like how um, these, uh, these neuroscans of DID in an alter fronting state um, compare to um, a more like, you know, compared to like, you know, somebody with CPTSD who is, um, not having a, um, a, you know, dissociated, um, you know, not a DID kind of state, but, you know, a, um, you know, a, um, a dissociating kind of state where like, you know, you're just kind of like emotionally shutting down and giving like, you know, one, two word responses to stuff. Right. You know, I, I would like to see how those compare. Um, cause that would, um, I think that would be helpful toward, you know, like whether or not DID should remain separate or as a subtype of CPTSD. Um, so, uh, so I think that would be interesting. And I think, you know, if there is, is enough similarity in how these kind of things um compare i think that would be a lot more helpful toward um um toward you know toward treatment of you know both honestly so but anyway like i said i don't see what the hell and, and as i've said many times already during tonight's stream i have just like a number of issues with bpd as a diagnosis just in general because it does have a significant history of just like being used to just deny that women and afab persons could ever possibly have ptsd of any sort um you know related to um you know childhood or domestic abuse and you know if you just call it a personality disorder instead, especially, you know, during a period, during a period of, um, even fairly recent history where, you know, they, they weren't getting so much into like, you know, cognitive and dialectical behavioral therapies for PTSD and BPD. Um, because again, the treatment for both is the same thing. And, um, but yeah, like there was a significant period where, you know, if you were diagnosed with a personality disorder, you know, the personality disorder was considered just like outright untreatable, not just, you know, untreatable with medications, um, but also like, you know, like they weren't really looking into, you know, behavioral therapies 
for personality disorders. So again, the, like there's a history of BPD, you know, being where like if it was a similar, if it was a, if it was a, if it was a, uh, a man or a mad person with a similar history of trauma, it would have been acknowledged as PTSD or CPTSD, and it would have been treated as such. But when it's a woman or a or AFAB person with a similar history of trauma, it was being diagnosed as P BPD. She was therefore cast aside as untreatable, but, you know, there is associated um, anxiety and depression, and we can medicate that, but everything else, lost cause. You know, so, um, so yeah, like, there's a lot of reasons I have just serious issues with BPD just in general, but at the same time, I know I'm, I'm now at an age where I just, you know, um, I'm just gonna, like, be extremely, um, discerning about where and when and how and with whom I pick my battles about this. And, you know, I, 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 I like Milena enough, you know, we've, uh, we, we've talked, um, DMs and voice chats, um, yeah, enough that, you know, I can say, I can say I like her and, you know, I'm, I'm not going to have an argument about BPD with her because I know my experience with um, being once given that diagnosis and how it was outright used to just like dismiss me as the crazy teenager who, you know, wants to manipulate people. And this was being used because, and this was done because my dad had convinced my therapist when I was in high school, not to trust me when I alleged abuse going on in the home. So, um, so yeah, so, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. He being me not only homeless sought shelter in a hotel with nothing but donations to support him after his tent was destroyed and one of his cats was murdered and, uh, Poppy and Zena actively sought to cut off this homeless trans man's ability to collect donations and called the cops on him. And notice, Molina notes that I am trans. And I'm relatively unprecious about um about you know my uh my trans history, all of that. So it's like I mean, I was just going on at length about BPD and, you know, being AFAB. So, you know, if you hadn't, if you're relatively new to the stream tonight and you hadn't put it together already, hi, I am a trans dude. Yes. Um, hey, 20 people in stream. Whoa. Hey, Melina's here. Okay. Um, I had been looking at the chat for a while. Uh, trans Persian shows up. Uh, saw your streaming thought come through um untreatable and pervasive oh yeah oh yeah you chose the jackpot of psycho hell <laughs> yeah uh sorry that happened to you some toxic stigma right there oh yeah yeah they hurt trans people oh yeah yeah and see like the thing that gets me is like you know like whenever people um when, whenever people like you know like white knighting for poppy you know bring me up they never acknowledge that I'm trans. And yeah, I, I, I'm generally pretty low key about it, um, online. And I say relatively, like there are some, uh, like on a, on the Catboy Ranch discord server, I'm fairly open about it there. Um, there's a couple other places, but, um, and when I say I'm fairly open at the same time, like, um, uh, yeah, like about a week ago, I was getting into it with somebody on um, on that server about something, and um, and um, just um, you know, like in a moment of um, 
of self-defense, I reminded this person, like, I, I am trans and somebody else who was just like watching, you know, this whole like back and forth between me and the other person unfold, uh, the, you know, like a third person responded, oh, wow, you're trans. I thought you were just like a cis femboy. So yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty low key about it online, but at the same time, I'm also pretty unprecious about, about it. And so it's like, a lot of times I just like, I guess I assume more people either know or get out by going by the fact that like one, I'm four foot 11 and unlike, yeah, you know, unlike a lot of cis guys, you know, who are like under five foot 10, I do not lie outrageously about my height. Like I've noticed this, I've noticed this with cis guys and cis women like a lot of cis women will lie outrageously about their weight to like take a few pounds off here or there um i once got into it with somebody like back on ye olden live journal days of social media about how pamela anderson claims to weigh 115 pounds but she also claimed to be like about an inch taller or shorter than marilyn monroe was billed as but also having very similar measurements to Marilyn Monroe. And then you can consider the fact that Pamela Anderson is also like a bit more muscular than Marilyn Monroe ever was. And yet she claimed to weigh 20 pounds less while being of a similar height and almost the exact same measurements. Like not unless breast implants are filled with helium is that possible for Pamela Anderson to have weighed 20 pounds less than in like, you know, in 20 odd four than Marilyn Monroe in her prime? Like, that's just not possible. Right. So, yeah, like a lot of cis women will lie sometimes outrageously about their weight. Like I said, case in point, there's no way Pamela Anderson 20 ish years ago weighed 20 pounds less than Marilyn Monroe in her prime, while at the same time boasting almost the exact same measurements and being almost the exact same height. That's 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 just not a thing. That, that, is, that is not possible unless breast implants are filled with helium. And even then, a 20 pound, you know, lesser weight just seems a bit much. Similarly, many cis guys will lie outrageously about their height. I knew a guy when I was an alternate DJ at a mod revival in Ska Night, in, you know, in Ypsilanti. Um, the dude was a bartender who was five foot five, yet on his driver's license, he claimed five foot ten. Which, like, dude, that is so illegal. Like, it's one thing. It's one thing if a woman claims to be like 20 pounds less on her driver's license because your weight can fluctuate, you know, sometimes quite wildly. And your driver's license only gets renewed every four years under, you know, typical circumstances. So, you know, like that's one thing to fudge your weight on your driver's license or state ID. It is another thing to claim on your driver's license or state ID that you are five inches taller than you actually are. Like you are now in the realm of falsifying a government document. And this is thus a state crime. Like, <laughs> like, dude, like, no, like, like, stop. Like, so yeah, like the fact that I'm very unprecious about being four foot 11, like, I think that alone should, well, then again, like Danny, I don't know, depending on, depending on the thing, then again, Danny DeVito's also older than I am, so, like, like, almost twice my age, um, and, um, and so, like, depending on the year it was and all that, like, Danny DeVito's height is anywhere from, like, four ten and a half to, like, five foot zero and one half, you know, so five feet and one half of an inch tall, so, um, I can see how that could have like fluctuated like by by age or like if he was wearing lifts in his shoes when you know like if he was claiming like five feet or something 
you know, like when he was younger or some or whatever. So yeah, like, like a one or two inch discrepancy in height, like that's, I mean, even half an inch, um, in, you know, in, in somebody's, you know, like, you know, um, twenties through mid thirties, like up to an inch difference in height, like that can happen like during the course of a day, just by gravity, you know, like compressing your spine slightly. But, um, so, uh, so, so yeah, like, but you know, like when you're as short as Danny DeVito and I, it's kind of like, like, what's the point in lying about your height at that, at that point, right? Like, like everybody can see that you are not like, you know, to, uh, to take the old bartender's um, example, like people can look at you and tell that you are not five foot four or five foot five, right? Like, <laughs> like, so what is the point in lying about your height at that point, right? Like, um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, like whenever, whenever these people bring me up, it's like, they always seem to seem to leave out the fact that I am trans. Just like that man was actively on stream trying to find their house and track them down in person, you know, like, like trying to paint this, like I am this, like, like this big, scary creep, right? (laughs) Like, like on what planet, like. Like, first off, fucking Xena is taller than I am. Like, Xena is taller than I am. And I don't know this from anything they've said on stream. I know this because I literally introduced myself to the two of them at a, this, at the nightclub one time. Like, like, this literally happened because I have a good memory for faces I meet in person. Like, Xena is taller than I am. Like, at least two inches taller than I am, right? I I forget what height Poppy claims, but I'm, I'm under the impression, like, just, like, looking at the height differential when they're both sitting at the chairs on stream, I'm guessing Poppy is in the area of, like, five foot eight, like, like I, I I'm I'm short and fat and like yeah like depending on the season I I have I have bicyclist um I have bicyclist legs but like 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 I, I I'm barely tall enough to like bite Poppy's kneecaps off like like yeah she's like she's like a pretty lithe five foot eight but Poppy can kick my ass Zena can probably kick my ass like 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 the way that this whole you know, tweet here from, from Nightwild, you know, it, it, it's trying to portray me as like this, as like this big hulking creep, right? Like ignore the fact that I'm visibly gay, like ignore the fact that I am visibly queer, right? Like even on, even on the stream that was referenced, you know, with the timestamp from the document, like, like this is, this is like trying to like paint this absurd picture of me. That man, like, like, no, dude, like that four foot 11, visibly queer trans guy, like, 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 no, like, like you are painting this, this bizarre picture of me with, with this tweet in in this really subtle way that stands at odds with reality. Like, not just, like, not just did, did the events described literally not happen, um, the, the the characterization from hey you seem to be missing some context that man was doing this and and he was quite literally trying to bah, 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 and Im, as well as implying he would show up at that at their house parentheses in my opinion okay first off like you know when, when you're forming an opinion on something you think lied, that is an inference that is not like like that is a specific kind of opinion and you know like i do tweeting later you know like i continue tweeting from there that you, you know, like, like well it's to publicly infer things i never implied the burden of proof is on them to support their claim otherwise it's literally liable and i can swing by the local legal service office services office and add them to the list beginning with poppy Zena, sage and others i'm well liked by the legal services office and yeah like that's because the legal services office um the reason the legal services office is familiar with me is because um, well, most recently when I was being priced out of my old apartment, um, and 
you know, at, at some point it just, you know, it, it just like, I, I, um, I, I just kind of like ended think like, honestly, my lawyer for that case, she wanted to go a bit harder than I had any like mental strength for at that point. Right. Um, like, like, <laughs> like I was just so exhausted at some point. I was just like, let's, let's just find a way to end this because I am tired. Like that is just what I told her. I said, I am tired. And I just, I, I, I just, I just can't do this anymore. Right. Um, but before that, um, they were the, um, it was the County Legal Services Office that um, helped me with my name change paperwork, getting my um, getting my stuff for my passport and thus my state ID updated so that, you know, it now says mail. Um, and they are the ones who got me in contact with the Ohio ACLU. I am on a class action um, um, thing from the ACLU of Ohio to get my birth certificate updated to reflect change of gender because I was born in Ohio and you still can't do that in Ohio. So, um, so, um, 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 but yeah, um, so yeah, when I say that legal services has been incredibly helpful to me over the years, like that, that it's, it's literally true. And like I said, they, they got me in contact with ACLU Ohio. I'm part of a class action, um, against the, you know, trans people versus the state of Ohio. Right. Um, or Ohio born trans people, the state of Ohio. Anyway, as a side, it's fun how these kids like ignore that I'm a trans man. Literally the only people who acknowledge this fact uh, are other, um, are other PZ victims. Cause if they only admit uh, that I was some guy coincidentally living in the same broadly defined metro area as, as <laughs> I typed poopy, um, who was homeless until about four and a half weeks ago, then they won't, then they won't have to acknowledge that Poppy is, or at least may be, distorting other events in to feign victimhood. Hey, this is like almost what I, it's almost exactly what I was saying just like 10 minutes ago. Uh, ignoring my trans medical status signifies how little critical thinking is actually being applied, and they're just parroting whatever Poppy tells them. Uh, if they actually look at any of the evidence people have, including my streams, they'd not only see that I'm trans, but they'd they'll likely notice just enough discrepancies from what uh, ZP tells them to start questioning things a little bit. The They only began acknowledging that I was even homeless at the time after Gayfish first brought it up, and then Sage acknowledged it, and that backed Poppy into a corner to finally, into finally acknowledging it. I've seen the screens. They've all got timestamps. Well, on the mountaintop, Mix Dizzy uh, was the first person besides myself, at least since this shit all hit, uh, to publicly ac acknowledge that I'm trans, not fesh. And there's some like history between fesh and I. Um, anyway, point is, uh, fesh had previous reason to believe it impolite to point out that I'm uh, FTM and Mix Dizzy didn't have that previous knowledge. Anyway, after uh, Mix pointed out that I'm FTM and the um, the the Zian Poppy followers still kept leaving that part out. I'm sure this is no small part because I've yet to have any screens passed along. Or I'm I'm sure this is a no small part. Or I'm sure of this in no small part. I think I misworded that a little bit because um, I've yet to have any screens passed along to me from moles within the foundation discord where she acknowledges i'm a trans man and not just some homeless lunatic since her discord is per disproportionately populated with young trans people of many genders including the full gamut of afab trans people it's far too inconvenient to her to acknowledge that i'm trans Th that just may make my situation slightly sympathetic to her followers, which would be a loss of control, and the narcissist is ultimately motivated by her need for control. HD Tutor, and um, and yeah, this is like me going on a, about a bit more of history between Fesh and I, but yeah, it's like, it's like, it's just like, it's just, it, it's these little insidious ways 
that they will um whoa 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 oh my gosh okay uh, scrolling back up here um to get caught up with chat uh, um uh they hurt trans people oh hey finally <laughs> yeah the the way that um restream is set up um i gotta go back and forth between tabs and i'm I i'm still trying to like get used to the fact that like um i have to like manually switch tabs so like some i'm sure you've noticed in some of my older streams that there's like points where i will like forget to switch tabs over uh they victimize their some them uh transpersion continues they victimize themselves constantly um uh with their trans identities and then erase the fact that most of the people they're at war with are also trans um in the video they dropped today they literally said that since we ignore Xena, it's got to be 90% trans misogyny. ZZ Erasure Eshel pulls trans misogyny now. What the fuck? <laughs> um, okay, I think I can understand the reasoning to that. And what the fuck is up with my closet light? Um, I think I can understand the reasoning to that. It's like, I think what they're trying to say with that was that, um, was that like since the focus is on Poppy, it's due to trans misogyny, and it's like no, no people ignore Xena because Xena just sits there like a bump on a log, doing knitting, occasionally going, "Yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm." I'm like, but uh, but yeah, like no, that's why everybody ignores Xena. It's not because the focus is on Poppy because Poppy is a trans woman, and ergo trans misogyny. It's like, no, people ignore Xena because Xena doesn't do anything. Like, like, like Xena is barely relevant to the channel. But, you know, they make the curious choice of, um, of, of putting the first name of the channel name as, I mean, it's always been this case. Back when it was called, you know, Trans Girl Therapist with Xena and Jess. Um, so, so, like, you know. They make the curious choice of like, oh yeah, let's call the show, you know, after you know, like like let's put the 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 first name being will will be the person who just sits there and takes up space, you know, like like this is the reason there's a second chair. Um, uh, Zena doesn't feel included enough in the abuse allegations. I guess, yeah. I mean, I can't tell that from here. Um. A balloon punk sound. Uh, I I don't even know what I'm talking about half the time. Uh, yeah, Google their go. Like <laughs> yeah, Google their GoFundMe info, which is murder. Oh yeah, because you know, I mean, and and like I said, it's Soul Bunny logic. Like this was the same logic that Soul Bunny. Oh my gosh. Oh, you know, I'm not gonna pull up the full thing. Like I'm not gonna like switch tabs to uh to Capway Ranch because like. Like, yeah, I know, like, the official stance is, like, you know, just because there are, like, people who go, you know, who are just, like, fucking insane every time Keppel's name is even so much as brought up. Like, you know, oh, wait, never mind. The the drama posting channel has been, um, has been, um, um, deactivated, uh, for, for the time still. Because, um, um, but, uh. Uh, so I won't be able to, like, pull that up, but, um, wait. Or wait, what was I? Oh, wait, 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 no, I was thinking of something else. Um, GoFundMe info. Um, oh, crap. All right, now I'm not sure what the hell my thought was, but, uh, Oh, right, right. Yeah, Soul Bunny. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, like, I explained to Poppy in the, um, yeah, like, the, the drama posting channel in Capway Ranch is, like, you know, um, invisible now, um, on hiatus until further notice. But, like, I, I said, like, lady, you're using Soul Bunny logic, you know, like, because, um, because the whole thing was, like, um, you know, like, Soul Bunny claimed, like, Oh, Keffel's Keffel's looked at the info on my GoFundMe page and um and, and an interview that I gave with my school with my with my college newspaper. Ergo, Keffel's doxed me on live stream. 
Poppy used the same goddamn logic. And when I said, lady, you're using soul bunny logic. And like somebody completely unrelated, like brought this up, like in January or something. And, um, and I said, lady, you're using soul bunny logic. Poppy's like, you need to use some new rhetoric. I'm like, um, no, it's the same logic you're using. It's like, I, I saw the info that you listed on your GoFundMe. I pay attention to the world around me. Um, you know, like I'm not so stuck up my own ass, you know, that I, that I acknowledge that there are people in the world besides myself who exist and they are autonomous beings who exist for more than just my own entertainment. And so I pay attention to them and the things that they say. And, you know, and I have a really good, you know, memory retention for things that I read and faces that I see. Oh, Poppy's six foot two and Xena's five foot eight. Oh yeah, they can both totally kick my ass. They were sitting down. Like, like, okay, like there's the outdoor smoking patio at the nightclub. Um, I believe you came and visited the one time uh to Michigan. I don't know if they took you out to to Necto during that time, but you know, like there's the outdoor smoking patio that a lot of nightclubs have. And so, like, you know, like there are the like the permanent benches there they were sitting down when i introduced myself and i like and i think it might have been a situation where like i saw a friend of mine like like an actual friend of mine talking to them so like those two are sitting down it's like i i don't know um maybe i just assumed five one could maybe i just assumed xena was five one because you know like I'll, that seems to be like the median height for like a lot of like AFAB trans people, like, it's like 5152. Please don't ask me why that is, because it's like, it's slightly shorter than the average, than, than the height of the U, of, of, um, the average height of US and U, UK born, um, cis women. It uh, tends to hover around like, you know, 5'3 to 5'4 and a half, depending on the decade, um, you know, the average is being taken. So, and yet, I've noticed there's like a lot of trans guys and other wise um, AFAB trans people who, you know, claim to be like 5'1 or 5'2. So like maybe I was just going off that. But yeah, like they were sitting down when I introduced myself to them. So it's like, I remember their faces very clearly. Um, but it's like, I, I'm not going to get a good guess of your height. Plus, like I'm half blind. So it's like, so it's like the fact that I can remember faces really well is like pretty amazing to me. But it's like, it's like, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to have like a, I'm, I'm going to have a she your grasp of your height. But yeah, like six, two and five, eight. Yeah. You can both totally kick my ass. Like, like I might be able to bite your kneecaps off. That's about it. It's like, that is my line of defense is like, is like the black knight from, from Holy Grail. Like, like come back here. I'll bite your knees off. Right. Like that, that's me. That is, that is how I defend. That is how I defend myself. I go for the knees because that's what I can reach. <laughs> like, like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, 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 like Poppy wants to, wants to nickname, wants to nickname Spawn the, the, the M word for dwarf. I've gone on on this on, um, on, on, uh, on older streams. Um, the uh, the old sideshow lingo is like if you were um uh, under well like first off like in the old school sideshows like you you could not get work as a dwarf in the sideshows if you were over five foot or four foot six whereas like um the current the the current medical definition for um for a person with dwarfism is being um is being under four foot ten. I was four foot nine until I was 19. Like from the ages of like 15 to 19, I was four foot nine. So I technically <laughs> began my adulthood with a form of dwarfism. <laughs> technically. <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, so, um, so like there were three categories for, um, for, for people with dwarfism in the old school sideshows. And I know this because I read a, like, like I, I, I'm like your classic like ADHD person, where it's like like something will strike my will strike my interest for like a month, and I will read as much about it as I can, and then something else 
catches my interest and you know the next month and i will then read as much about that as much about that as i can so like i have this i have i have this like memory bank full of all sorts of you know trivia facts right so like old school sideshows like we're talking like very early 20th and you know 18th and 19th centuries um um if you um you were built as a dwarf if you had um you know like what what would now be recognized as like a classic achondroplasia dwarfism right you know so like a slightly shorter than average trunk um but with like much shorter um arms and legs and you know a relatively you know um um people like billy barty right or uh oh crap um the guy the guy from um um um, um game of thrones peter peter it's peter I, I, I'm old as shit, so I'm going to reference Billy Barty. If you don't know who that is, just, like, look. There's, like, 22 of you in, um, watching right now. Just, like, you're on a computer. Look up Billy Barty. I, 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 like I said, I'm old as shit. That's, like, so, like, you know, there's your classic, like, a chondroplasic dwarf. Um, it, you know, if you were in the side, if you were in a 19th century sideshow and you, you had that form of dwarfism, you were billed as a dwarf. Now, then there's the people who have what's now categorized as primordial dwarfism, um, where your um, where your limbs and trunk are more proportionate. Um, but you have a very short stature, like even shorter than most people with a chondroplasic dwarfism. And, um, and people with certain forms of primordial dwarfism also, like, very seldom live to see their 40s, whereas... It's not uncommon to see people with a chondroplagic dwarfism live well into their 80s, like Billy Barty. Um, so, yeah, when I see people with, um, with like, the, the whole, like, cultish fat liberationist people that Best X has gotten himself in with recently, which is why we've had very, you know, very brief conversations with each other for the last year, is because, like, he would rather continue binge eating than, you know, send his type two diabetes into remission. Right. Like I, I was, I, I was, I was like, just, I was like on the borderline of pre-diabetic and I like not even pre-diabetic. I was like on the borderline of pre-diabetic. I sent that into remission very easily. Um, granted it involved losing about 80 pounds and I've since lost another 20. So, you know, I mean, I'm still very overweight for four foot 11, but, um, but yeah, um, it's not, you know, so like, but, um, but people with giantism, extremely uncommon that they live past the age of 60. Um, in fact, like for every hut, for every inch over, um, six foot five, it's safe to assume take an ex take five years off of your ex off of your life expectancy, right? So like after it seems to be about six foot five. After six foot five, for every inch over six foot five, expect five years. You know, like assume five years off your life expectancy. Like so, like when I see people with the with the fat liberationist saying, "Oh well, people don't treat being over tall as a medical condition," I'm like, "Yes, they do." Yes, they absolutely do. Andre the Gi the giant did not see the age of fifty, and for a for somebody with giantism, he was relatively short. Like he was not like he, he was not an especially tall. Um, he was not an especially tall ac acromegalic. Like he was not an especially tall per giant. Even for a giant, he was not especially tall. He did not see the age of fifty. <laughs> like, and, like, the guy, lifelong athlete, but the human body, the human body does not like extremes, but it can deal with some extremes better than it can with others. And when you look at the average life expectancy of people with most forms of dwarfism versus people with any form of giantism, 
and I'm not talking like you know like localized gigantism of a of like a limb or or something. I'm talking like you know acromegaly, right? You know, like like whole body giantism, right? Like that's kind of a broad definition or broadly defined medical term, right? So like people with people with most forms of dwarfism tend to live longer than people with any form of giantism. This is just a fact. Like 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 when you look at the lists of the tallest people on record, like the taller they are, the shorter their lifespan. The tallest man on record, Robert Wadlow, was um they couldn't even get a full height on him until postmortem because of the way that, you know, you know, be- because of his spinal curvature for that for that height. Um, he died from a gangrenous infection because he could not get proper circulation to, you know, his his legs. And he had an infection in his leg because he had to have braces to stand like <laughs> He died at the age of 23 at seven foot, 11 and a half full height. So yeah, I'm like, I don't know. I'd rather be four foot 11 than six foot three, honestly. (laughs) Like when we are living the Soylent Green dystopia and they have to like, you know, um, adjust buildings when they have to adjust apartment buildings to cram in as many, as many people as possible, like, Like, you can take, like, you know, like, say, a 90-foot-tall building, and if you reduce the story, if you reduce the story of a building, you know, by, like, two feet, you can fit that many more apartment units into a 90-foot-tall structure, right? So that means that when we are living in the soil and green dystopia, where, you know, like, overpopulation has us, you know, signing up for the Canadian... For for the Canadian Sui booths, you know, from Futurama, like, you know, just to like feed each other. My people, my people, the pygmies, and that's my category in the uh, in the old school sideshow is like, if um in the in the eighteenth and nineteenth century sideshows, then there was the pygmy category, which is how I got on it going about giants. Um, I would be a pygmy. A pygmy was somebody under four foot ten, so like, you know. That's how nutrition worked then. Um <laughs> But you know, like usually, you know, um, you know, and yes, like the term pygmy does have a very racialized history. So yeah, like if you were um if if you were from um if you're from um uh south america africa southeast asia um aboriginal australia um you are more likely to be billed as a pygmy um if you were of um if you were of a european descent so like um you know and there were a few sideshows that had white pygmies but we were billed as like um being irish I would be billed as, you know, as, as fey folk, right? I, I'm descended of, uh, I'm, I'm descended of the fey hills, right? That's how I would be billed in a 19th century sideshow. If somebody were like Scandinavian, um, and like four foot nine and decided to go sign up for the sideshow, they would be billed as like an elf or something, right? So (laughs) it's like, it's like, um, so, uh, the, the, and I forgot what got me sidetracking on this. Uh, 10,000 dungeon years. Trans mask erasure only matters when it's Xenia. Right? Right? Um, though I do take, I, I do, I, I seriously dislike the term trans mask for a number of reasons. Um, but the first and foremost being because um, usually when you see trans mask, short for trans masculine, it's usually paired with somebody saying trans women and trans masculine people or trans women and trans masks. When we're talking about cis people, nobody says women and masks, women and masculine people, women and masculines. Nobody says that. Nobody says 
femmes and men, feminine people and men. Why do we say trans women and trans masculines? Why do we say trans women and trans masks? It's a sneaky way to not simply misgender, but to ungender trans men. Um, it implicitly says that trans men are not men, but some kind of hyper-masculinized woman. So there's trans women and there's hyper-masculinized cis women. That's what trans women and trans masks says. That's what trans women and trans masculine says. It, it, it says you don't see trans men as men. It, see, it says you see trans men as a hyper-masculinized woman. It also implicitly obligates trans men to perform masculinity. Because, you know, women, like cis women, aren't obligated to be hyper-feminine or, you know, even especially feminine. I mean, hell, what would have been considered, you know, like cross-dressing in the 1950s, you know, for women is now seen as fairly average way women dress. Um, Ricky Wilkins, she's butch. She's also a trans woman. She is a trans butch. That's one of the many ways she's identified herself. Um, I, I don't remember if she has anything to say about the term trans feminine and how it might apply to her or even if she considers it as a word that applies to her, but um, I, 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 I don't know. I just, I, I don't like the way that, uh, and, and like so few people get my back when I say this. Very few people ever have my back when I say this, um, even if they will like eventually begrudgingly agree in broad concept they're just you know they still say well you know it's just trying to be inclusive and i'm like but nobody says when they're talking about cis people women and masculines women and masks women and masculine people nobody says that so why are you saying trans women and trans masks just like no but, uh, but yeah, like, you know, and like, I, I, so yeah, like, I, I don't like that term on that. I don't like the way that it's used as an umbrella term because then it would implicitly obligate trans men to perform masculinity to an extent that, you know, like, I, I wanted to be Mark Bolin when I grew up, right? Like, well, okay, first First thing when I wanted to grow up, when I was when I was a when I was a little kid back in the Stone Age, uh, I wanted to be like, um, 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 I wanted to be, and I would go get my copy of a Night at the Opera right now that I've had literally since I was five years old, but I still have all of my records in their in their boxes and not up on the shelves, and I don't feel like looking for it right now, um. When I was five years old, um, Freddie Mercury, Blam era. When I was five years old, I wanted to be like, uh, I I wanted to grow up and be just like her coal rimmed eyes, you know. Um, like this was the era of, of Freddie Mercury. When I was five. Was, I'll give me a little tiny version of that picture. Oh, here we go. Is this going to be a larger one? No, we got to do it this way. We got to like click the thing. Please show me a bigger version of this. Oh, for fuck's sake. All right, whatever. In the era of Freddie Mercury, that is. I don't think we wore something like that, and that's being called a Halloween costume. But no, like, not Tom of Finland, like early mid 80s Freddie Mercury. I wanted to be like glam era, long, 
long hair, coal eye, jumpsuited Freddie Mercury. Is there a way to like zoom zoom in this photo? All right, that's a little bit there. Why are you giving me a giving me a thing to crop shit? Like this, ready? I wanted to be when I was five. Would anybody say that's especially massive? I wouldn't deny that he's a guy either, would you? So, if you wouldn't say that looks masculine, that looks like a masculine man, why are trans men put under an umbrella called trans masculine if cis men and trans men are, in terms of one's function in society, essentially the same you know maybe not in all ways identical of course you know if we're talking especially if we're talking about people who medically transition like you know if trans men are functionally the same as cis men why use terminology that obligates trans men to perform masculinity like it implicitly implies you know, it implicitly obligates trans men to perform masculinity if you're lumping them under an umbrella term of trans masculine because like if men are allowed to be effeminate and nobody would question that they are men then why are trans men automatically transmasculine. So like when that word first came about, it was in yield live journal days of social media and it was an explicitly non-binary identity. The same with the, the term trans feminine. And I don't think this should have changed. Unfortunately it has and I have to argue with people about this repeatedly because like now we've gotten into this into this in, into this like little cycle where I'm like, I don't want to say that people are giving certain branches of turfs ammo, but that's because I'm polite. <laughs> I am polite and I am tired. Um, yeah, but anyway, like, um, but yeah, Zena does identify with the term transmasculine, and I know this because Zena has said this many times on stream and in uploads. So yeah, um, you know, uh, but yeah, like the reasoning is, oh yeah, yeah, Zena gets, oh, get, oh, their reasoning is simple. Zena gets ignored. It is bigotry. But yeah, yeah, no, Zena gets ignored because Zena doesn't do fuck all. Oh yeah, and not online. Like, like, people have said that Xena has been, like, especially active on Blue Sky, and I'm like, hold on. Nigel's asthma is, it, on the good side, it's not gotten worse since we've gotten to the new apartment, but, um, there are some days that are better than others. Okay. Today's mostly been better than it was yesterday. So that's good. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he needs an inhaler. And unfortunately, I have exactly $15 in my bank account until Monday. So, and then Chewy only offers like two day shipping. Um, so, uh, or guaranteed a two day shipping on, um, on feline inhalers. So Nigel is shit out of luck until at least Wednesday. So, okay. <laughs> oh yeah. No criticisms of, yeah. People are saying that like Xena is especially, um, active on blue sky. And I'm like, yeah, compared to Twitter, like, 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 what the hell is especially active for Xena is, like, you know, posting once every three days versus once every three weeks. Like, that That seems to be the, 
Like, God damn. Like, Xena's not even active on Ravelry. Like, and, and the, uh, and, and their, um, and the description box of their goddamn YouTube channel lists, um, Xena's Ravelry in, like, every goddamn description box and i am way more active on on ravelry than xena is and i've barely got any of my stash cataloged like since 2011 oh hey i've got oh never mind that's shopping bag that's because like there was a coupon code for morale fiber um years crocheting 15 years knitting five I've got like, oh God, yeah, I've got 35 years crochet experience. Ha ha ha. Oh God, more than that. Um, I mean, okay, I guess, I mean, looking at all the, at all the faves and stuff, I guess, you know, I, I guess Xena adds, adds designs and, you know, other people's projects to their favorites all the time, but it's like, Oh my god. Wow. Wow. Holy crap. Xena's Ravelry still um lists Poppy's name as Jessica. You know, rather than um, you know, yeah. Co-host with my partner Jessica on our YouTube channel. Um media title. Oh my gosh. Like, like, dude, like when was the last time and I and I'm just saying dude is like an an ex you know, like an interjection, an interjectional term. So it's like, what the hell? Like not even active on Ravelry for, or at least like not recently enough to like update your goddamn profile info. Oh my gosh, did I dox? Did I dox Xena by looking at a Ravelry they haven't apparently been doing fuck all with for what was it like two years, three years ago that they updated the channel name and therefore like you know, other shit. It's like, like, no, no, like, don't be stupid, stupid. But yeah, like, I am clearly far more active on Ravelry than Xena is. Like, what the, f where the hell is Xena active online? Other than, like, you know, maybe posting a blue sky once every nine days or something. Um, Oh yeah, thirty plus years. Let's see. I I learned from Grand Mary when I was eight. So, oh yeah, yeah, over thirty five years. So yeah, like more than double plus. Favorite curse word: kiss a flatig. I know I've said that at least. Oh God, I think I called Sage that in a in that stream. Did I? I might have. I don't. I don't care enough to go back to. That uh, that timestamp stream, but yeah. Um, in case you're curious, um, syphilitic dog or in context syphilitic bitch. Now I don't think Sage has syphilis. I'm just saying that's one of my favorite Welsh curse words. So <laughs> like, <laughs> and that's just kind of a bitch. Oh. I imagine it like the Steven Universe is the. It, 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 Theme. Oh God. Yeah. Did Zima have their knitting kit with them? Uh yeah, I should get going. Oh shit. I'm way late in feeding the cast, and I'm surprised that Nidal's not up. My Phoebe's just sleeping. Oh, she'll wake up when I get up off the bed and go into the kitchen to make their uh to make dinner. Let me uh let me test something with science here. Phoebe. Kath and I. I'm so super. I'm so super. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, uh, shit. I wish there was a better way for me to, like, pivot the laptop um, webcam. But when I say this. Her lip twitches in her sleep. I'm so super. <laughs> oh, 
I wish there was a good way to show this. She's so funny. It's like she can she can just about hear me say it. Oh, Nigel came in the bedroom though. Okay. I'm taunting the cats with with dinner long enough. So all right, yeah, like there's 19 people watching right now according to um according to the restream jobby. Um and Melina's gone to bed and so yeah, now that I have once again shared with you my diabolical methods of doxing Zena and Poppy by referring to info that they put online themselves, you know, and will gladly share with literally everyone. You know, again, it's soul bunny logic. It's soul bunny definition of doxing. Like, if Keffel's referring to soul bunny's GoFundMe page and the interview with the with Soul Bunny's college newspaper that she gladly shared on her Twitter and her YouTube channel community tab. If that is, if Keffel's like noticing the things that Soul Bunny shares with her social media audience, if that is doxing Soul Bunny, then yeah, I guess I doxed Poppy. Because I pay attention to the world around me and the things that people I watch on social media say and share with their audience. I am an active listener in the audience. Ergo, I doxed Poppy. You know, because uh, I, I look at the city listed on GoFundMe. I look at the city listed on the P.O. box that they that they have up on the description boxes of videos over a year old. I don't know why they took the P.O. box off of that description box, you know, um, the copy pasta that they put in there, but for some reason they did, but it's still up on the older videos. Um, hello. Hi. Oh, did, did it just occur to you that I was, I was given the, the the super call. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna see like really. All right, there's hello, oh ho ho, little kitty, little Miss Phoebe. Are you gonna fall off the bed? Let's hope not. Hello, look at this. Kitty cat and belly rub. Kitty cat and belly rub. She will beg for this. I wish there was a better way to angle this right now, but I don't have a separate webcam from the uh, from the laptop. Oh, 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 oh. Are, are you, you were about to slip off the bed. I know. I know. Who's a sweet little lady cat? Hmm? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, oh, we're back to 21 people in the audience tonight. Um, oh, oh. Well, hello. Hi. Yes. Hmm. I'm so super. Hmm. I'm so super. Hi. <laughs> She's so funny. Hello. Hi. Okay. Come here, come here, come here. Okay. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. I know. Let me be annoying. Let me be annoying just a little bit. Okay. Not a little bit. Okay. Okay. Mm. I know. I know. Kitty. Ah. Is it the Phoebe show now? Is it the Phoebe? Oh, all right. Do we want the Phoebe show or I'm so sure Really? I know. I know. I know. Really? Is Papa being annoying? Just a little bit annoying. Just a little bit annoying. Yes, I will. I know, I know. Oh, 
头。Phoebe, you make so much hair. I know, I know. Look at this. Look at <laughs> oh, she's such a sweetie. She's such a sweetie. I know. I know. But, yes. <laughs> she's so polite about it, too. Yes, I know. Pretty little lady car. And, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. Not on the keyboard. Not on the keyboard. Yes. Ah. Uh, uh, uh. Am I being annoying? Oh. Super. I'm sure super. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I've been taunting the cats with um with uh with the with the Welsh dinner bell long enough. Yeah. I'm sure super dinner time. Um <laughs> I do um, I, I do give them, uh, I, I do have some, um, commands that they've learned in Welsh. So, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I've been taunting the cats with the, with the dinner bell long enough. Uh, so I'm going to end the stream. Um, feel free to, um, donate to, um, my, uh, my Ko-Fi. Help me offset the cost of my cat's inhaler. Ofi.com oh. slash one. Um, and um, uh, feel free to help me offset the cost of my cat's inhaler. Not this cat, the other cat, the cat who was coughing about like 20 minutes ago. Um, he has asthma. He's had it his entire life. Um, it has gotten a little worse due to, um, well, uh, two winters in a tent. Well, most of two winters in a tent. Um, this, uh, this most recent winter was only partially in a tent, but, um, but, uh, um, on the good side, it has not gotten worse since we've gotten to the new apartment and, um, He's definitely having more better days as far as his asthma is concerned since we've gotten to the new apartment. So it might just be s very slowly getting a little bit better. But, you know, a uh, cat needs a $60 inhaler and I don't get paid until Monday. And while the um, my apartment is subsidized via Section 8, um, my, uh, my annual income, which I was um, pretty open about on Twitter yesterday um, with uh, my social security disability um, that's SSDI. Uh, it's, uh, I did the maths yesterday and did I save it to the calculator? So let's see, I get, I get two checks. One is, um, I did not. So let's see. One check is my own social security disability, and the other check is um, survivor's benefits after my mother died, um, because my father was also disabled, so, uh, because he had a head injury in 1990. Oh, I have $10 until Monday. That's fun. Um, 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 oh, wait. Um, deposits. That will show me, like, a lot with a lot less scrolling. So let's see, like, okay, okay. Um, ba -ba so let's see, mine is 772, and then my mother's um, 548, and that equals 
1320 a month times a year and right okay i must have done some maths a little bit wrong yesterday then so oh wait no i said under 16k a year so yeah that's um uh 15,840 a year um in uh social security so like while it's good that my rent is locked into one third of my monthly income. Um, I still, I still uh, have an income between deadly and squat. Um, squat would be like zero income, I guess. So, um, so yeah, every little bit helps. Um, feel free to check out my Ko-Fi. Um, PayPal donations via Ko-Fi are best because that pays out instantly and. That would mean the cat's inhaler will get paid for that much sooner. I would also like to get a new headboard for my bed because the old one that I had got trashed in the previous move. I need new bookcases for all of my books because I have reached a standstill in unpacking because I have more books than shelf, meaning that I have about nine boxes of books and no shelves. So, um, and some other little organizational items for, um, you know, various things would also be helpful around in here. Um, I might need a new cat tree, but I'm hoping I can, I also need a new bidet, but that's just because wiping is for suckers. <laughs> I am not that disabled, but, um, so yeah, like I did, I did some maths on like an Amazon list and like my, uh, my Ko-Fi goal for assorted miscellaneous moving in expenses. That is about what I can get away with, with stuff, um, I don't, um, for, uh, for the stuff that I definitely need and some stuff that I just kind of want because it would just give me a little tint of happiness. But uh, but yeah, if you can't, that's fine. Um, just pass along the info. Feel free to like, subscribe, all of that happy horseshit you're supposed to do with um strimbers. And um and um I'll probably be streaming tomorrow and definitely Sunday because the bus does not run on Sunday because it's Easter. Um so I might be streaming all goddamn Sunday, I, I don't, and um, or I guess like not goddamn, but um, Jesus Lich Sunday, right? All right, um, 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 um. So uh, be sure to drink your water, take your meds if you need to, and if you've been watching me for a significant amount of time, you probably do need some meds. Um, uh, otherwise take very good care of yourself and have exactly the kind of day you deserve. Hopefully that's a good one. Bats and kisses. Nosta Aquil.